And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Smoker Show. Uh, it's been a while. We have been away. We have been traveling. And guess what? My good buddy Phil Basar is traveling right now. You are live on location. Tell us where I'm, you're at. I am coming to you from a completely different country. I am. I'm <laughs> in Canada. In Canada? Hey, Canada. That's hey. what it's all about, eh? Uh, we did have an interesting yes. last couple of weeks. We did go to London Vape Jam. Uh, we did indeed. We and did then indeed. I had to travel to Greece and then to Prague and then to Greece again and then back here. Uh, you had some stuff to take care of as well, too. So um, we had a good time in, in London. I really enjoyed the show uh, versus the, the last time we were there. Uh, it looked I like thought it was fantastic. Mature, I thought it was really mature, good. I thought yeah. they, uh, they, they cleaned stuff up really, really well. Uh, everybody was super nice. Uh, I don't think the show was as busy as it was the, the first time that we Correct. went. Correct. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I'd go back again. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I think. I think. Uh, I think that it's matured, and I think that uh, I think Vape Jam will be back on the radar. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we do still have uh, 40 million smokers in the United States that are looking to convert or to quit smoking, and that's what but we're here to do. Did you see all the STs sent me I in did, the, uh, the chat? I did. I isn't love that, Scott. Such, he's so nice. He's Scott's so, kind of an awesome guy, isn't he's he? He's such a cool dude. I mean, Scott is so much nicer than Fagan and Mike Vave, right? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you say you that? You shouldn't have wouldn't to say that, me? but <laughs> if, if I wasn't in a relationship with you, Scott would be my second choice. How about that? <laughs> How about uh, that? <laughs> you hear that? Uh, all right, that's so uh, yes, uh, welcome to everybody that's in the chat on YouTube. We are broadcasting on smokefreeradio.com and, of course, on Phil's YouTube channel. The telephone lines are open, 215-383-5752. Press 1. If you have any questions or comments, we'll bring you on and have a nice discussion. Uh, the telephone lines are brought to you by the, the Vaping Advocate magazine. And, of course, we want to thank our sponsors, which are Joytech, Inican, and, of course, Five Ponds. Speaking of Five Ponds, today I was in... This is this is dedication to vaping. Yeah, go ahead because I, uh, I, <laughs> I have some dedication to vaping yeah. too. Go ahead. I I left at five o'clock in the morning to go to Atlanta for the nicotine conference, two hour drive. Listen to this, folks. And then since I had to do the, I didn't stay in Atlanta. I could have stayed in Atlanta, but I wanted to do the show today. And of course, you have no technical uh, at all expertise to do the show. So I drove two hours back from Atlanta to do the show, and I'm going to drive two more hours in the morning to go back because it's a two day conference, and then two hours to go back. But uh, Rodney was there from Five Ponds. They released this new uh, sea salt line. I always got really, really good packaging. And, um, and these are the new flavors. I got some from samples from it. And I said, I was like, oh, yeah, salt line. Everybody else is doing it. But it's not a salt line. It's not a salt line. No, it's actually a sea salt line they've, they've worked on in the past. And they finally decided to release it. And it's just based on sea salt flavors. For example, I am dying to try that that sea salt potato chip, chocolate covered potato yes. chip, right? Chocolate oh covered potato God. chip, then a sea salt minted melon flavor, and then which appears to be is going to be my favorite. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, sea salt caramel peanut and green apple. That sounds really? delicious. You know, I'm it a does. big apple fan. So yeah, I'll try them and I'll let you though. know on the next episode when I get to them. These are three milligram, but uh, well, at least we're going to get the taste of the flavor. And then hopefully we'll get them in 12 milligram as well to try ooh, them. Ooh, I, want them I want them in 12. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted to touch on a few topics today before we get into you're in Canada. And we kind of wanted to show you the process of making liquid, especially for a smoke where you hear all this stuff about bathtub juice and where the liquid is being made. And, yeah. and, and to be fair, there is some of that out there. <coughs> you need, really need to do some, a little bit of research and ask your supplier where you're getting your products from. But we're going to be touching on this on future episodes as well, too. Hopefully, we'll do a, a shoot at Five Ponds and maybe a couple other liquid manufacturers that want to open up their doors to us. Just kind of give you an idea, right, Phil, of, of how liquid is being made. And it's not the, the fear-mongering that you hear sometimes in, in the media. Yeah, well, I think, you know, liquid production has come a long way from, you know, when, when we started in this game. Uh, it's done a whole lot better now. It's done in labs. It's done under, under um, ISO compliance, um, good, manu good manufacturing processes. So, you know, it, it's nice to see because we do ingest this stuff, right? I mean, we do take it into our body and it would be it's good to know that it's being it's being made in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah. So we want to show you that a little bit later on, and I know you did some interviews up there as well too. So I'm looking forward. I haven't actually seen the footage, so I'm. I'm yeah. Well, so the the problems with the interviews are is that they were shot. Uh, Dimitri slammed them all together, and yes. we're just going to play them. So they're not and, edited at all. So and I hope it doesn't um, break. 
We and we hope it doesn't break too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before we get to that, I do want to touch on a couple of topics. And we've, we, I mean, me and you have talked about this actually in the last two years, and it's kind of interesting to see data that is coming out now talking about yeah. uh, smokers and 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 converting to vaping. And uh, this study just came out the uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, the study is uh, is titled. This has actually been a peer reviewed and published uh, study uh, in the Environmental Research and Public Health uh, Journal. Why don't smokers switch to using e-cigarettes? Uh, and this has taken actually a study of confirmed smokers talking about uh, why they they either tried or they haven't tried or why electronic cigarettes failed. So I'm not going to go through the methodology. I'll have the link, of course, in the description if you want to go through it at all. Uh, and, and, you know, exactly how they got all the, the information. But I do want to get to some of the results. And I, I find it really, really interesting, you know, the smoker's view of electronic cigarettes. Uh, this took into consideration 640 smokers. This was taken in the UK. By the way, in the UK, which is one of the more uh, popular countries for electronic cigarettes, only 16% of smokers have converted now, even with Public Health England saying that that, that vaping is, is so much better than smoking. So it kind of blows my mind. And then I'll show you some data in, in a little bit that I got today from Atlanta that's really going to blow your mind. But they took 650 smokers, um, and and they went through this entire process to get some of the some of the, uh, the the feedback that you want. And this is some of the stuff that we hear all the time, Phil. Right? Uh, in total, 344, 59 percent of those who responded to the questionnaire provide information on their use of reduced nis- ni- uh, risk nicotine products. Almost all of those reported that they had used e-cigarettes. So first, they look at the reasons for the smokers. Um, the, why they tried it, and in most cases, is you know they wanted to have a healthier life than what they are now. The most commonly cited reason smokers offer for not having to try any available electronic nicotine delivery systems was the individual enjoyed smoking and was not interested in using a device, which in their view was associated with quitting smoking tobacco. That's a really really interesting response, Phil. So let's it touch is, let's yeah. touch on that. Like they enjoyed smoking, that they figured that they're going to switch to this product. It's not going to be enjoyable as much as smoking, right. and. I'm trying to bust my head to figure out why why would they have that opinion of vaping products? I mean, could it be the possibly the marketing, the advertising, with the products or availability that's out there? But we we know obviously because we're vapers, and 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 I hope you, if you're watching and you're a smoker, that you give this a shot. That it, vaping is so much more pleasurable than whatever smoking was. You know, I think so. Uh, first of all, don't bust your head uh, doing anything tonight. That's number one. <laughs> number two. Um, what we said this in in a show a while back we said that uh, you know the smoker has to be ready to quit they have to be committed to do it uh to really make it happen and be successful with it but i mean that's that's very telling in that they you know they enjoy the pleasure that they get from a cigarette and they feel like they're going to lose that pleasure by going to vaping now you know maybe they didn't experience the right product maybe they didn't experience any product um, you know, it, it, it's when you have something that's so comfortable in your life and comforting as that cigarette, you don't want to lose it. But I can tell you, folks, uh, if you are thinking about this, you know, when you wind up getting into vaping and experiencing the different ways that you can vape and experiencing the, the just the, the, the tremendous amount of flavors, flavors and options that you have available to you, you will find that vaping is is actually much more pleasurable and much more enjoyable and much more configurable than that cigarette ever was or ever will be. Do you think, Phil, and I had this conversation with RJ down in Atlanta today, do you think that, I mean, we talk about ease of use and, you, and you're going to see it, in fact, in this study as well too, but the ease of use of smoking a cigarette plays a huge role in it as well too because, let's face it, I mean, okay, maybe with the today's pot systems, we've kind of gotten close to that. Although I don't think, you know, the satisfaction is still not there, totally satisfaction. But the ease of use is something that is missing terribly from today's uh, availability of vaping products. Yeah, I, I think the only thing that even comes close to a traditional tobacco cigarette is going to be a pre-filled pod, right? Um, you know, a closed system pod. That's that's is going That's going to be as close as you can get. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I, I think we really need to focus on making things simpler. And although it, although you would think that a pod system uh, refillable 
uh, is going to be an easier solution. In many cases, it's not because that user is going to get this tiny, teeny little pod and they're going to have to deal with those little plugs and getting those little plugs out and getting your e-liquid in. So, you know, even with a pod system, uh, th there's room for improvement. The, the good news is that, is that we are seeing um, better things come out now. And, 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 and it's interesting that you say that because if you see the data today, we're going to see a, a, a huge influx of dual use with the pod systems. Now, again, I'm not saying that that because sometimes people misconstrue that that oh, all pod systems are, are crap. I'm not I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying is that a lot of people are picking a pod system simply for the times that they can't smoke, so they're dual using. So we're hoping that that experience will be pleasurable for them to become an advanced user. But we're having a gap in between there. And even, even the global data that we got today, a huge survey that was done in three countries, you'll see that the data is missing. We're missing that intermediate. You know, we're going from a pod system to a sub ohm tank. And that intermediate section is, is has a huge gap, in my opinion. But interesting in enough, uh, Phil, I just wanted to see some of these comments here. 59-year-old female smoker. Because I enjoy smoking, there seems to be an assumption that every smoker wants to give up smoking. While this is true for some, it's not true for all smokers. You know, I think that's a little bit of a denial there. 47-year-old sure. male smoker. E-cigarettes do not appeal to me because they have no tobacco in them. Uh, I do not think that I derive enjoyment from the nicotine alone. I think that there are other substances in tobacco that are beneficial and enjoyable besides the nicotine. Be beneficial? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. COPD, I guess, <laughs> cancer. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, other uh, other less commonly cited reasons for not having tried e-cigarettes were perception that the devices were unreliable, that the batteries used within e-cigarettes often caused problems, that the devices were too complicated and they might be associated with long-term health harm. I mean, a lot, a lot of that... Granted, has to do with the propaganda of, of that what, sounds what we're like seeing. big media to me. Right, right. So, yeah. so, so, yes, that is, even though there is some truth to it behind there, but the, the instances of batteries and stuff like that that are malfunctioning are minute compared to the death toll that traditional cigarettes have. And yeah, but I mean, this is the perception. I I just received them in email this week from a, a a brand new vapor using. I mean, they're satisfied. They haven't smoked a cigarette in like four days. But they are so concerned that that device is going to blow up on them that, that I've been kind of talking this person down a little bit and saying, it's not what you think it is. You know, the, most of these cases are user error, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, there is there is a big portion of that as well, too. And, and it's very hard even for us for the vaping industry to admit that, to say, you know, <laughs> publicly well you know these guys because sometimes you get the backlash of the community as well too but th it's true it, it is true and it does happen and i think that smokers should not be deterred by what they what they perceive of of what what it is i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go down uh a little bit here to what did smokers like most about e-cigarettes so 201 smokers commented on what they liked uh, most about cigarettes with the largest okay. category of responses, 59, having to do with the fact that these devices could be used in a much wider range of settings where combustible tobacco products were typically banned. So we see that the, in a lot of the initiation and people are enjoying this is that they can actually use it in the car, you know, with their wife that complains about smoke or in their house or in places where they traditionally don't smoke. And that's okay. I mean, if that's the reason why you're going to try out vaping, there's nothing wrong with that. Other people do it for price. Other people do it for health. Other people do it for various reasons. But it's interesting to me that the majority of these responses was that I can do it in places that I can't, that I can't smoke. What do you think about that, Phil? Um, you know, I, I, I like that, but I don't know if, um, <laughs> that's going to, that's going to win us any popularity yeah, contest. That's either, right. That's true. I mean, you know, one of the problems is I think that people just think the fact that, well, they vape and they don't smoke, therefore I can do it anywhere, right? Uh, and maybe that's one of the problems and one of the uh, the bad raps that, that vaping is getting is because people are abusing that. Uh, and, you know, they're in the middle of a restaurant or the middle of a, uh, a mall or the in the middle of a store uh, blowing a giant cloud. And and I think we just we, we still need to be respectful of the, uh, the person who's standing next to us and, and consider... Uh, what it looks like, and even even not what it looks like, because I know there's a lot of uneducated people there, and they think that that vapor is bad for them, sure. right? But um, it's just a consideration factor too. Maybe you don't like the smell of an overwhelming um, maple uh, flavor in your face, right? So um, I don't know. What do you think about that? You know, 
I don't know if that would be my number one concern, being able to do it anywhere. No, it is, it, and it's not. But if that's the initiation of it, I get it. And and in some cases, let's say you know, a woman suffers from asthma and her husband smokes, and they have to go on an eight-hour drive in the car, right? So he can't smoke. You know, I think it's a reduced harm for both of them at this time. Mm -hmm. So I have to take that in, in consideration as well to what the setting is. Now, if you're just doing it to elude a ban, again. Why not? I mean, it is a smoke-free product if that's what's going to do. But what is the goal? Is the goal for you to continue to dual use or is the, is the goal for you to switch out? Either or is fine with me. Whatever you decide to do. You're an adult. I can't tell you what to do it. But mm -hmm. you'll see that the amount of dual use is extremely high and we have the opportunity to switch them over. Yeah, it's and, very and, high. And, and, and the fact that it talks about the varieties and it talks about the various products that are in there, I found that interesting as well too because it is configurable. A cigarette is not configurable, right? That's so right. the fact that it's configurable, it's a it's a blessing and it's a curse. From, obviously, it's a blessing because you can really fine tune it to whatever you want to do, right. and it's a curse that sometimes to get that configuration to the point where you want it, you have to have an engineering degree. <laughs> so, um, right, you, you have you have a lot more a lot more configurations and a lot more possibilities uh, that you have to sift through to find uh, to find the the, the correct uh, formula for you, right? right? Right, right. So if, if, I, if we continue on here, the next most frequent set of comments setting with a smoker's likes about e-cigarettes had to do with a lack of an offensive smell, which is good, coupled with a wide range of flavors that could be vaped in e-cigarettes. These comments were mentioned by 51% of the smoker, no tobacco smell, my clothes and hair are not smelling, no lingering taste or after smell, the taste of my vanilla custard is fantastic. The next most common... Find... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. You go know ahead. what I find interesting so far is that we haven't even gotten to anybody talking about, well, it's better for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right? and, and I mean, it does. It does. It gets there. Okay, but, good. Well, it's, but, it's good that eventually we get there. But yeah. I mean, okay, so the first reason is that I can use it anywhere. The second reason is, well, I don't stink anymore. Right, right, or, right. You know, when do we get to the fact? And, right. and again, I think this is a lot of, of um, big big media and big propaganda. Absolutely. So now here we see the next most commonly expressed set of views, 34, right, 34, identified with the smokers like most about e-cigarettes, had to do with the relative price of e-cigarettes. And then interestingly enough, only 19 smokers drew explicit attention to the lower level of harm associated with e-cigarettes <laughs> as being something that appealed to them, right? Only 19 of those that responded, which... Um, which, which, I mean, this is just clear. It clearly defines that the opposition has done a great job of yep. misleading the public perception of a factual scientific outcome of a study that the Public Health New England did that vaping is ninety, at least ninety five percent less harmful than smoking. Right. I mean, there's no doubt at this point. There's there's scientific evidence to back up these claims. It's not that we're making these claims. We're citing the Royal College of Physicians. So right. it's interesting enough that only nineteen. Well, cited it as a reason, and it's fourth down on the line. And again, yeah. we're well, trying to talk to smokers here. We're not talking to vapors. We know you vapors know all right. this, and we know that. You know, so keep that in mind, please. If you're, if you're listening to the show, it's just information that you can pass on to a smoker. If you're a smoker, please pay attention and understand what is going on here. Go ahead. Phil. Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. Go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> I was, I was going to say about being fourth in line <laughs> that the actual fact that it's. it's yeah, no. That, that, I mean, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. It's just a statistic that I'm I'm just uh, just baffled with. Uh, what else do we have here? It is evident in these smokers' comments a large part of the appeal you circus had to do with it is seen increasingly restrictive regulation of combustible products. So most of the people that that took this study really just tried it because the smoking is becoming to be. Uh, um, you you be basically become an outcast if you're smoking in today's world. You know you can't yeah. smoke anywhere. Right. So uh, well, let's get to the really interesting um, uh, portion. Before you do, before you do, Demi, I want to discuss yeah. something with you here real sure, quick. Sure. So you know, one of the things that we just talked about was the fact that um, you know I think the, the 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 mainstream media has done a really good job in in being anti vaping. Am I am I stuck here? No, no, I'm you're fine. You're doing fine. the best I can with this internet connection yeah. here. The um, but the the vaping industry has done a really poor job of, of educating um, people. So I think the, the problem is here, if we have 10 stories about vaping and nine of those stories are good and one of those stories is bad and anti-vaping, <clears throat> it's that bad story, that anti-vaping story that winds up in mainstream media and on the news. Why do you think the news, why do you think mainstream media is so against this? I think it simply boils down to clickbait. 
I think it blows the ground completely. Now, keep in mind that the large uh, so-called public health nonprofits use public relations firms. Mm -hmm. Every big organization does this. It's not just them, okay? Everybody uses a big PR firm. So what, what PR firms do is you supply them information and they put it out there in the media. Depending on how much money you spend, you're going to get it into more articles and more op-eds and more you know, Fox News and all that. The less money you're going to spend, you're going to get it in the Tennessee and like I get my op-eds. <laughs> so you're going to get it in, in the, the New York Times. So number one, clickbait. Okay, I mean, it's it's so much easier right. for somebody to click a story that says e-cigarette explodes in man's mouth, b b blows 52 teeth out than it is to have a story that says uh, youth smoking is an all time low. We should be celebrate. We should be sell. This should be the main headline. Never in the history right. of tobacco control has youth smoking been as low as it is today, April the 24th, 2018. So. That clickbait coupled with the power that these big op, you know, opposition teams have in, in getting their, their stories in the media using these PR firms, those, that's a one-two punch that we just can't compete with yet. Okay, We can't compete with that yet. We're just not financially or mature enough as an industry to be able to compete with that. And that's my opinion on why, why, why we're losing that fight. Well, it, it is really sad that, that science and truth and studies can't compete with with uh, big media and and, and sens sensationalism, I mean, it's that's crazy. Yeah, and and just and let me just bring this question up from the chat. I want to address it from a, from amnesia because it's a very very interesting question. The question uh, reads: What about all those future smokers? Talking about those who are going to take up smoking in the future? Should the industry try and market to them in a preventative matter, so to speak? Sure, absolutely. And and let's let's not kid ourselves. I mean, the initiation is there. Whether it's going to be cigarettes, whether it's going to be vaping, whether it's going to be weed, whether it's going to be the next whatever it's going to be, um, vices are an uptake. I mean, it's an initiation. There's nothing that you can do about it. Um, and I have said it multiple times. If you're going to try a product, I'd rather you try a product that's less harmful than start off with a product that you can become addicted to that's going to kill you for sure. We know factually, again, speaking, that a cigarette 20, 30 years from now is going to cause you some health problems and eventually uh, could possibly kill you. In fact, today, Dr. Uh, Garner in at Atlanta, he is the the, the chairman of smokefreeworld.org. If you want to go check out, it's a new, it's a new group that's been uh, formed with a billion dollars of funding for the next 10 years to make a smoke-free uh, world. He said it, the number one preventable cause of disease, illness, and death in the entire planet is smoking. Number one. Number one. It, it supersedes everything else that's out there. So should we market to them? If somebody is an adult, based on the law that it is now, and comes and wants to try vaping, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And on that flip side, if you are an underage smoker that's been smoking for 17 years old, you've been smoking since you were 15, you should have the option to try a less harmful product. I am against them limiting that and saying, well, guess what? You're going to have to wait till you're 18 or you're going to have to wait till you're 21. Just keep on smoking for four more years. And right. then and then when you're 21, we'll let you try a vapor product. I think that's just completely ridiculous based again on the scientific fact. I'm not saying it as a customer or to bring more people to vape and all that. Just a scientific fact that it's less harmful. Yep. So I hope that addresses your 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 question. Um It does. Uh, amnesia. And and I'm sure Bill and uh, there. if if I if I miss any questions, I'm sure Bill will be will uh, forward them to me. Yep. All right. Let's get to the to the to the nitty-gritty here. Let's get to some of the um um so, so, so something I found really, really interesting here. What did smokers like least about e-cigarettes? In relation to what smokers like least about e-cigarettes, the most commonly expressed criticisms had to do with a perceived shortfall in the technology of the devices themselves, which I think means it's just, you know, as you see in the comments, I hate the weight of the appliance and the metallic feel. This is a 69-year-old female smoker. The size and shape of them, 67-year-old female smoker. All the peripheral that goes along with vaping, batteries, refills, mm -hmm. etc. The feel of hard plastic in my mouth. Um, followed, this is the second one, followed by negative comments about the taste and flavors and the sensation of vaping. A total of 16 individuals drew attention to health concerns about e-cigarettes, with a majority of those having to do with individual coughing following vaping, which is something you have touched on a lot, Phil, and I want you to touch <laughs> on it one more time. I and mean, we keep repeating ourselves until people can understand. Yeah. And a small number of individuals commented negatively about what they perceived to be rather clicky feel of e-cigarettes and e-cigarette culture and the price of equipment. 
Okay, so let's get down here uh, and and start dissecting these one by one. Uh, I, we we have talked about the relation, especially with the older smokers. And again, folks, please don't misconstrue this comment. But a twenty four year old smoker will relate to this so much easier. I mean, it's, I mean, they we will. have cell phones now that do pretty much everything except make you coffee, right? So it's so much easier for a twenty four year. I'm not saying that we don't want the 24-year-old guy to, to quit smoking, but what's more important is the people that have been smoking for 20, 30 years that are starting to develop health problems. Those, we really need to focus on those to help them yeah. quit smoking. Yeah. And I, I heard a comment, and I want to discuss this later in the show, Dimitri. I, I, a comment came my way, and I saw it. And, and the comment was this. Throat hit and mouth to lung are things of the past. Okay. And I want to talk more about this. So yeah. let's remember this to talk about it later. Absolutely. Because I both agree with that statement and I disagree with that statement. And we'll get into it later on. Sure. Sure. So let's get into the second to the second uh, of, uh, of it a again, followed by about the taste and flavors and sensation of vaping. Do you think that that has to do with the fact that we kind of forgot about tobacco flavors. We got up, forgot about higher nick to give you that sensation because that sensation has to do with how satisfied you are. If you're not satisfied with vaping, uh, again, in a sub ohm type culture, when we're talking about somebody that's 60 years old that's been smoking the same way for 40 years, and we give them a device sure. that does not give them the sensation. I mean, 53% of the response, I think it's a very, very high number when we're talking about taste, flavors, and sensation of vaping. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and you know, I mean, we've said this over and over and over again, that the the industry um, lost its way for a while. Uh, I truly believe that. I think you truly believe that. Um, I think we had uh, an incredible reduction of the products that are needed to, to convert smokers. Uh, luckily, I think at this point, we're starting to see a turnaround. Um, and, and maybe it's because we want we're getting back to uh, tobacco harm reduction. Maybe it's because this is just the new fad. Salt, Nick, is the new fad, right? The pod yeah. systems are the new fad. Um, well, whether or not it's 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 the new fad, the good news is is that we have more devices, we have more nicotine levels, more nicotine strengths. I wish that it wasn't just in the salt, Nick's, okay? Yeah. But more more things that are geared more towards the smoke. It's interesting. Today in Atlanta, I met uh, one of the guys that owns Electric Tobacconist, I think is the name of the website. They're out in Seattle. And I've heard about this website in the past. I think they, they've talked to you as well too, Phil, like you mentioned it in one of your videos. Um, and it, it's a really, it's, I, I'm, I've invited him to come on the show to talk about it. And he's going to be a future guest. A very, very insightful guy. He heard me speaking in Atlanta and he, and he came up to me. He kind of understood, you know, where I'm coming from with smokers and stuff like that. And we had a really interesting conversation. And he, they carry everything from from Finn, Finn battery. Who, who nobody, nobody sells Finn? He says you'd be amazed how many people buy the Finn battery because it's easy, you know, the ease of use and all that. One of the hardest problems that he has, their, their website is very, very specific. Like this very, very supportive starter kits, you know, make sure that they match you the right liquid and all that. But one sure. of the hardest problems that they've had is finding tobacco flavors, tobacco flavors that can appeal to a wide range of tastes, right? Because the industry shifted. Now, I'm not saying that there's no tobacco flavors out there. Don't get me wrong. Because there are. And because, some very, very good ones. Because there are. But you just don't hear about them. They don't get the publicity. They don't have the distribution. They're they're not popular to get into the distro, you know, that's selling the, the three milligrams, six milligrams, stuff like and that. So what you're saying is that there's no cartoon characters all over the bottles. Yes, they're not in between... Yes the boobs of some Instagram model right, because, right. you know, that's not the correct marketing for, for right. a tobacco. So perhaps they are shunned by the very vape shops who should be really curious about these flavors and very, very interested yeah. in converting smokers. And it helps, what you're saying. And right? it helps dual users convert as well, too, because one of the problems that dual users are is that they can't get that satisfaction. So they vape, but they also smoke because they want that immediate rush of nicotine and the hit yeah. and, and that tobacco flavor. And a lot of them are not switching for various reasons. And again, this does not cover all the vape shops. We're talking though a lot of vape shops in the United States. You can go inside and you, they'll have one or two tobacco flavors. Why not have the availability of... What's a very popular flavor? Um, strawberry donut. I, I can guarantee you're going to go into a vape shop, you're going to find 10 different strawberry donuts, right? Or uh, a sour gum, whatever, sour, whatever, candy, whatever. You're going to find 20 of those. Why not have that same availability of tobacco flavors to be able for somebody to come in and find something that's going to keep them off that dual use or be able to convert? 
it would almost be good if if a vape shop had a C store section, right? Because what happens when you go into a C store? You see a wall of cigarettes. Well, the reality is that wall of cigarettes is a wall of flavors, yeah. right? Um, it's it's the Marlboro Light and the the Marlboro and the Benson and Hedges and the Salem and the Newport. But what is it? It's a wall of flavors, just like you find in a vape shop. You find right. a wall of flavors. The problem is, in very very few vape shops, will you find a wall of tobacco flavors? Right. So how cool would it be if, if a vape shop had that that C store wall, okay, for that beginner, for that yeah. person who's interested in that tobacco flavor. Sure. Here's all of your options. Because, you know, like when, when a smoker goes into a vape shop, like we, we've been saying here all along, is they might not find a whole lot of tobacco flavors. Right. And, and you know, we always say this, that even when I started vaping, what did I want first? What was the first vape that I wanted? I wanted something. I didn't give a shit about flavor. Oh, am I not supposed to curse? Yeah, that's okay. I didn't. I didn't care anything about flavors. Right. I didn't care about watermelon or or peach or anything like that. All I cared about was get me as close to my Marlboro Light as possible. I'll be happy then. That's what will make me happy. Now, once I was able to make the transition, and I think I was using the Kang tobacco, you know, back in the day. And, and then all of a sudden I realized that, well, there are these other flavors. Let me try one. Let me try one. And then boom, that opens up the world of flavors when you realize that you can get that pleasure, right? But that pleasure doesn't have to come from a tobacco flavor. That pleasure can come from other, you know, flavors. Right. And, and that opens up a world of possibilities. But like we continue to say, we don't care where you go. We don't care what your next steps are. What we care about is that you at least take the first step and you have the products available to you to make that first step successfully. And as we said in the previous uh, show, don't be discouraged if you're going to a vape shop and you don't find what you're looking for. There's other vape shops out there that you can go and explore. Don't just don't give up as a smoker. Don't give up. Do some exploration online as well, too, because a lot of the uh, and, and I'm seeing some of the comments from the vapors as well, too, here in the chat field. My vape, local vape shop are full of 100 percent BG juices with 3 percent nicotine. Uh, no, no throat hit. A heavy smoker will be not be satisfied for that. Right. Um, I think the market does not care about new vapors anymore. And but I see a lot of these comments even from existing vapors that realize that. Yeah, even and, and, and I love vapors that are honest with themselves. Yes. Okay. If I vape three milligram and I, I'm I'm happy with that, I'm fine. But I also have to recognize that there's a guy next to me or a friend of mine or an uncle of mine that's still smoking. And what can I do? What can I provide them to to quit? Two one five right. three three five seven five two is the telephone line. It is open. If you have any questions or comments, we will be taking calls here in a little bit. And it's brought to you by the Vaping Advocate Magazine. Look at your super sexy overhead cam. You like Look that? at you. You like are that? so special. I, I, I'm using it now because I have pants on, and I usually don't have pants on. But I oh, do have that pants why? on. So that I, yeah. And that angle. Well, see, look at that. I got a pink cup, too. Do you see that? You do. You really do. Do you like my super sexy hotel door back I, there? Well, the, nice? only thing I'm, the only thing I hate about the hotel is that I'm not there with you, buddy. I know. And it, there's a nice big king bed in here, too, and a jetted tub. You're missing that <laughs> Oh, me. man. So, I know. They I didn't know. have that for us last time. We had to snuggle. I know. Uh, Here I am all alone with a jet. But I do want to. I do want to make just a brief announcement. I'll say it again at the end of the show. CV Edmonton is coming up uh, this weekend. Phil will be there representing us. I cannot attend because it's Lena's twelve birthday and it's my daughter's birthday and we're celebrating this weekend so as much as i would love uh to be there and i love vaping uh she she has my heart so let's continue a little bit here um uh i, I okay we, we talked about this smokers reasons for combining vaping and smoking this is dual use reasons again and again i, I just want to i just want to clarify we're going through this study and a couple more stuff that we're going to show you this data because maybe you can relate to it Maybe you can relate to it as a smoker, and the solutions that we're going to give you will help you get over that hump, okay? That's what we're, we're trying to educate. So again, if you're a vapor, you probably know this already. If you're a vapor that wants to get more information, great. Thanks for hanging out, but please keep an open mind of why we're actually uh, doing the show and who we're trying to, to talk to. Yes. Uh, all right, so smoker's reasons for combining vaping. Basically, uh, uh, dual use. 107 smokers provided reasons for why they combine vaping and smoking rather than opting to switch exclusively to a lower harm product. The most commonly cited reason smokers offer for not switching had to do with a perceived enjoyment, which they said they derived from continuing to smoke. It was mentioned by 36 uh, responders. I still enjoy smoking. 
Nothing takes mm-hmm. the place of smoking. I have no desire to. I enjoy smoking. And I think the pleasure principle, there we go, the pleasure principle. So why isn't that transitioning product satisfying and pleasurable enough for them to be able to say, man, this is, if not just, more? Because that transitioning product has to be as close to a cigarette in the satisfaction that they're getting. And again, in my humble opinion, Phil, uh, jump in here. Yeah. Um, you know, what would be interesting to see is to see a lot of that data broken down further, right? Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's what I would be very, very curious to see. Okay. So it's not as pleasurable as smoking. Why? What was it about it? What was it about that? What, what you were using that made it not as pleasurable as smoking, right? Um, you know, to go back before, um, I found it difficult to use. Okay. Why? What about it was difficult to use? What were you using? What did you try? So, you know, without having data like that, it's, it's very hard to fix the problems. Right. And, and it goes on. I mean, you see 27 respondents said that the experience of vaping was not as pleasurable as smoking, right? Not the same, same pleasure effect. Didn't enjoy it. Vaping is not quite there yet as a substitute. Real cigarettes are more satisfying. Alongside these frequently cited main reasons for combining vaping and smoking, a minority of smokers also cited the fact they had experienced adverse reactions to vaping. We've talked about this. You might have, you might overnick, you might cough, you might have a PG allergy, stuff like that. Harshness on the throat makes you cough. I am going to pause here and I am going to turn this over right to you, Phil, because you've talked about this. And if you're a smoker and you pick up a vapor vapor product and you cough, what do you do, Phil? Here's what you do, because here's what you did. Here's what you did, because back when you had your very first cigarette, okay, and you lit that cigarette and you took your very first puff and you brought it into your lungs, did you go... (gasps) Oh, that is so smooth. No, you coughed your lungs out. You coughed and you choked and and you were, you couldn't believe it. And what did you do? What did you, did you put it down and say, I'm not going to do, no, you had another puff. And after you did that, you had another cigarette and then you had a cigarette after that. And guess what? You didn't cough anymore. Yeah. Okay. So what is it, what is it about smoking that allowed you to suffer through all of that coughing and all of that choking while leading a less healthy lifestyle and get your nicotine in a less healthy delivery method. And you can't give vaping that chance. Okay. The good news is today we have things like salt nicks. Okay. That, that back off on some of that, the, 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 the strength from the, um, the, the throat hit, right? They give you a smoother vape, but allow you to still have a very, very high nicotine level. So it's good that we have things like that. But give vaping a chance. Every, look, I coughed. Well, actually, no. I can't say that I coughed when I had my first vape because my first vape was a Joy 510 on a high-resistance atomizer. There, there was nothing about that vape that, that could make anybody cough, right? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, nowadays, and I have friends, all of my friends who were able to quit using traditional nicotine, okay, standard nicotine, not nick salts, a lot of them coughed at the start, Mm -hmm. okay? And maybe we adjusted their power a little bit, and maybe we adjusted their VG a little bit, or maybe they just suffered through it, okay? But they were able to get through it. They are still vapors today, and guess what? They don't cough anymore. So if you gave that unhealthy thing a chance and you coughed through that unhealthy thing, why don't you give this healthier thing a chance and and either adjust it find somebody who knows what they're talking about to make those adjustments for you and suggest products for you that maybe won't let you won't make you choke or cough Mm -hmm. or suffer through it and 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 have a healthier method of getting your nicotine especially since the whole goal here is to reduce your harm so just tough it out is basically what we're saying <laughs> we're just saying we're just saying tough it out and i know sometimes that sounds like it's you know like it's hard we get it but it's not as hard as you taking that first cigarette puff that made you cough in some cases made you weave weave we you, know, you didn't get a weave <laughs> you you weave i didn't know that you're wheezing or or even puking i've heard a couple of people say in the first cigarette they did they made, that it made him puke so so yeah. if you're a smoker that's the best advice i'm going to give you and also and also i do see some comments of a vapor that have sent smokers to vape shops and they regret it okay i see those comments as well too just comfort them. 
comfort them. Say, it's okay. We, we tried one place. It didn't work out. There's other places out there. Let's find something that works for you, even if it's online, because there are places online that do cater to that. Let's try to find another place and let's try to find the product that works for you. And let's try to find the shop that's going to cater to you. Because in every city, there is going to be a shop that caters to smokers. Uh, interestingly yeah. enough, here in the conclusions uh, field, this is in the conclusion of the study. If cigarettes are going to appeal to a much wider range of smokers. If e-cigarettes. If e-cigarettes. Yes, e-cigarettes. Uh, it will be necessary for the vaping experience to be at least as enjoyable as smoking in terms of a smoker's perception and very probably more enjoyable than smoking. There's an important need to ensure the continued availability of a wide range of flavors and a wide range of e-cigarette kit encompassing technology which is relatively simple and easy to use mm -hmm. and that which more is more complex and appealing to those who enjoy new technology. There is a need to ensure that these devices can be used in a wide range of public settings without the users experiencing the stigma that is sometimes attached to their use. It will require mm -hmm. the continued availability of e-cigarettes at a price that makes them competitive com combustible tobacco products, and it will require the vaping experience to be as similar as possible to the smoking experience in the speed of nicotine delivery, in the effect on the throat, taste, and sensation. Now, I'm not one to say I told you so, <laughs> but I'm saying I told you so because this is what we've been talking about for the forever with me and Phil. And again, folks, not that if you're an experienced vapor, you have plenty of choices out there, but we have a gap, folks. And this study proves once again that there is a gap of these products that are either into the insufficient category or into the advanced category. And that middle ground of ease of use and a satisfactory vape in 2018 is unacceptable, in my opinion, to exist right now in vaping. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I've said this so many times. You, we we have, um, we have fifty, you know, fifty thousand high wattage devices out there. We have fifty thousand sub ohm tanks. We have fifty thousand drippers. You know, it would be nice if we had that same fifty thousand choices uh, for the beginning uh, uh, vapor, for the beginning, the transitioning smoker. Uh, we need those those products. We need. Um, you know, and it can't be just one. It can't be the Joytech EIO or the Inikin T18 or T22. It's got to be that same mass of products that we have. Because think about it. It's that mass of products that we have for the hobbyist side that propelled this industry forward so hard and so fast. Um, and, you know, we just never had that same amount of, of choices uh, for the beginning uh, vapor. Right. And, and we need that. We absolutely need that because we need to propel this industry. We need to propel vaping um, to the smokers. We got to market this stuff to the smokers. Absolutely. It is very, very easy to market to vapors. How do these, how do these Chinese manufacturers market the vapors? Very simple. Um, they have a new product. They send it to every single reviewer out there. Right. Okay. And everybody reviews it. Right. And you have just marketed that product to every vapor out there, right. every hobbyist vapor out right. there. But you know who you haven't touched? You haven't touched the smoker. Right. Right. That is exactly why we are doing this show. We, we, we are thrilled about the fact that we have vapors watching this show. This is not the goal. We want vapors to send smokers to the show. We want to show a different side of vaping. You know, like, like you saw in the report, some people don't want to vape because they don't like the stigma that vaping carries with it. They don't like the look of vapors, okay? Um, people are people, in my opinion, but if people are saying that, that's a problem. We need to take a hard look at ourselves. We need to, to take a business. hard yeah. look at the industry. Yeah. We need to take a hard look at ourselves. We need to, to you know, step back. Step back and, and look at it from a different perspective. You know, I, what what would this magazine look like to the average person? What would this show look like right. to the average person? Is it inviting? Right. Is it right. welcoming? Or does it look weird? Right. Does it look weird? OK. And, you know, again, I just I, I want to stress this very, very clear. OK. The people that I have met in this industry are some of the most wonderful people in the world. OK, I'm talking to this guy right on, online right now. I can't even think of what his name is, but he's got like his face is covered with tattoos and piercings and everything. I've met him at a couple of shows and he is one of the nicest people I have ever met. Right. But if nicer than me. Walk, is it nicer uh, than me? Far, please, anybody's nicer than you. But, you know, if people are looking at this person walking down the street, they have this perception about them. And it's unfortunate that we live in a world that that bases their opinion on perception. But unfortunately, that, that is the world that we live in, right? And, and we're trying to show people that there is a different side of vaping.
that this is not just about the hobbyists and this is not just about the cloud chasers, but this is about the average working person. This is about the older person. This is about the middle aged person. Lungs are lungs are lungs, people. Yeah. Okay. And all lungs can be helped by this technology. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's spread it. Interestingly enough, uh, again, for the smoker that is listening, the, perception of what vaping is into relation to smoking is horrible in fact in this study 41 percent, 41 percent of smokers thought that vaping is just as or if not more harmful than cigarettes that number is unacceptable completely based on the science that we have and inside the study as well too which you'll have in the in the description of the video you'll see that it actually calls on media professional and scientific um uh, reports of e-cigarettes to stop being seen as a threat to public health and let's actually use this product to reduce disease and 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 death. And I think that's very very important. Data fresh from this morning. I'm gonna explore this more on Smoke Free Radio next week because I have a lot a lot of stuff to talk about on Smoke Free Radio, which is a podcast that's geared towards more vapors than it is to smokers. But if you're a smoker, you want to tune in, you can download it on iTunes and. Uh, SoundCloud and Spreaker and pretty much every every podcast uh, outlet that's available. But in any case, um, this was a really interesting. This is fresh data from Global Data Survey. Okay, this is a really really interesting chart. So this is taken data in three countries: UK, France, and the United States. So what we're seeing here, this number right here, whoop, twelve and a half million dual users versus four and a half million exclusive vapor users that and that would be 4.9 million there. yeah what did i say four and a half million. okay my bad 4.9 i'm seeing it upside four. down 4.4.9 exclusive users 12 and a half million and i have no doubt i mean this this is global data it's one of the biggest companies of data providers in in, in the world um so this number i mean we have almost three times as many dual users as we have exclusive vapors now reducing your your intake of cigarettes is a great thing it really is but the goal for us is to transition you fully right so what have we been doing wrong in the last 10 years that we can't get this number to be opposite you know why can't we have 12.5 million vapors versus 4.9 dual uses and that's something that we really have to explore and i'm going to spend a lot of time on smoke crew radio as well too but i do want to bring up another chart that they have inside here because it's something that me and phil have you know just whined and whined and whined about all the time what can the vape shop do to take that existing dual user and switch them over what kind of engagement does the vape shop and what kind of role does it play well you know you need to have tobacco flavors because dual users want tobacco flavors. One of the reasons why they're not transitioning is because they can't find that available flavor that is out there. It's clearly marked over there. Most dual users, more dual users, this group actually, according to the data, will grow. Dual use will grow as more bans and stuff like that are happening for cigarettes in different countries. But you need to target. You need to target tobacco flavors. The availability of tobacco flavors in vape shops is ridiculous at, in, in, in 2018 with a lot of really good... The experienced users will grow as well too, but what you need to have, you need to have that specialist engagement for them, for the advanced users that are gonna come in. So let's get them, let's get the dual users, let's put them in the vape shop, let's give them this, the same service, availability, and variety of products, including flavors, spe more specifically tobacco and menthol flavors, to get them to try to make the full like, switch to vaping. Then you can progress them into, again, with a variety, it even talks about catering to the advanced user here you need to have more specialization hobby growth leads to that demand have uh, you know engage with the peripherals and the premium products that are out there as well too you need to have those into the shop to make sure you, you know you make the whole the whole conversion so the last figure that i want to show you here right is uh this right here so what can we do Price range of devices and flavors have to appeal to both experienced and new users. Now, Phil, and, and I'll ask the guys in the chat as well, too. Is that currently happening? And don't tell me about that one shop because I know that one shop. Yes, I know they have it. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about 10,000 vape shops in the United States at least. Yeah. Right? So yep. what what are they offering as far as range of devices, flavors, and, and service to appeal to both existing users? Zero, three, and six on high VG. <laughs> right. Attract new dual users with high value introductory offering. What does that mean? 
You cannot bring a dual user inside and sell them a $120 kit with four batteries and a battery charger and a 100 mil, three milligram liquid and get 120 bucks off them. That does not work to eliminate dual use. In fact, it deters people from switching completely. So you need to have that introductory pricing offering to entice a dual user to stick with it. Okay. Um, remain, you know, front of mind in highly fragmented product space, uh, portfolio that is approaching flavors, utilizing more challenging flavors to appeal to experienced users and, uh, and you, and you users alike. Okay. So again, this is fresh data just came out today and, and I haven't really gone through the whole thing. I will go through the whole thing and do analysis on it. But again, it confirms what we have been saying, seeing that 14 point, whatever it is, million dual use number shocked me today. The number mm. shocked me today versus full-time vapors, which is right under 5 million in a, in a, in a survey done in, for three countries. Your thoughts, yeah. Phil, your thoughts on what yeah. you just heard. That, that, that is a really, really high number. And it, it almost leads me to believe that um, there's a lot of people out there who are not uh, serious about vaping, but vaping is uh, a toy for them. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fad for them. It's, not, um, it's, it, it's something they're trying. It's something they're playing around with but they haven't found that right product or the right tank or the right mouthpiece or the right liquid uh, to really convert them successfully. And, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't look down on dual use, but I, I, I do wish that people gave this thing a chance, right? I mean, what does, what does vaping do for us? It, it gives us our, the hand to mouth. It gives us the, the oral fixation. It gives us our fake smoke. It gives us our throat. It gives us our nicotine. It gives us pretty much everything uh, that a cigarette uh, gives us, but in a lot of cases, it doesn't give us the, the ease of use. I mean, look, a cigarette, you take a stick out of a pack and, and you light it on fire, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's got to be it's got to be that easy and it's got to work 100% of the time, all the time, um, or it, it'll never take. I want to, uh, yeah. I, I just don't like to see that 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 high number in dual use because you know it, it, what's going to happen. Um, you know, five years down the road, where is that number going to go? Is that number of that dual user is it going to go over to a full time vapor or is it going to go back to a full time right, smoker? Right. My fear right. is it's going to go back to a full time. Absolutely, smoker. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's no doubt, and I think that the evidence will, as more of these studies coming out, keep in mind we're waiting on the past study to come out from the FDA. They've been working on it for five, four or five years. We're going to see more data come out, but I think they're all going to be conclusive kind of on that same path as we saw with this study that came out now. I, 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 do, want to, I do want to uh, briefly show you um, uh, a few reduced risk products that, that can help smokers quit. We're not necessarily endorsing all these products, but I do want you to understand the difference from them. But first, let's just get a couple words in from our sponsors because we have bills to pay.
What is up, Favors? Today, we're gonna give you a brief overview of the Zenith X Chroma A kit. The third edition in the platform series collaboration between Inikin, Phil Basardo, and the Vaping Greek. The new Zenith platform kit puts an ultra compact and extremely versatile 75 watt device right in the palm of your hand. With an onboard internal 2000 mAh LiPo battery, two amp micro USB quick charging support, and Inikin's integrated vape wall charging technology, this kit is always ready when you need it. The new Chroma A is the perfect fit for most popular atomizers, with its fully upgraded and completely flush 24 mm 510 connection. For those advanced users, you can vape with confidence, using the onboard temperature control function with dry hit protection. Paired with the Zenith MTL atomizer and high milligram e-liquid or Nixalt, any given user can enjoy over a full day of temperature controlled vaping. The Zenith tank also comes with two different coil heads to tailor the vaping experience to your exact preference. Included is a 1.6 ohm Kenthal coil for a cooler vape at lower wattages, and a 0.8 ohm Kenthal coil for a slightly warmer vape at higher wattages. This kit is available in both black and white finish options, along with a four milliliter or two milliliter TPD compliant tank. If you'd like to pick one up today, please check out the link in the description below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Look at that, Phil. It's like, what did you design that or something? <laughs> All right. So, thanks. Hey, wait, wait. Yeah. By the way, yeah, yeah. by the way, if I had done that e leaf commercial, I would not have had low, medium, and high upside down during the commercial. Yeah, I know. I know. You, you plus you held it like for like a minute and a half. I didn't want to say anything. It was just funny seeing you. Like yeah, I took okay. like a thank few, you very much. I took uh, a few couple, pictures couple too. Things. Did you did you take good yeah. good? Um, a couple of things there. Um, to Ralph, yes, commercials uh, because we do have sponsors. You see, we yeah. have sponsors there. Joytech, Anakin, Five Pawns, sponsoring the show, supplying us with uh, with giveaways for you guys. So yeah, that's the uh, the purpose of the uh, of the sponsors. That's number one. Number two. Roast Beef Sandwich, by the way, I love that name, um, had an interesting comment there. And, and he said, um, that is definitely not Phil's son. But no, that's not what he said. But he said, don't be embarrassed by asking for higher nicotine. And don't be yeah, embarrassed for point. using higher nicotine. Because let me tell you something. I've had a lot of um, uh, uh, liquid companies not, not really belittle me, but make me feel silly. Yeah. Okay. Because you're asking for, for 12. When, what? Because you're asking for 12. Yeah. You know, you go there and you try a flavor and you're like, oh my God, I love that flavor. Can I have that in a 12? Yeah. And they look at you like, 12? 12? Yeah. I mean, that, and you know, it's they, like. They make you feel like you're a dinosaur or like you're like, oh, come on, man, get with the program. Everybody's doing three and yeah, six. I get exactly it. Exactly right. Exactly right. And I did see well, a comment about smokers from Amnesia. Trust me, Amnesia, there's, there's smokers that are watching. They're just, they're afraid. They're afraid to talk because we have done a horrible job of of intimidating smokers. It's true. And and we just want to get the information out there. And we know from the private messages that we get and the emails that we get that smokers are watching. They're just a little bit shy. And you can see from some of the comments, even from existing papers in the chat, they would feel intimidated to to post. But here it's yeah. all about information. You know, ro roast beef, um, when and this is probably a really bad example, and I'm sure I'm going to get some hate for this, but when, <laughs> no, when you, I do, again, no, imagine that, right? <laughs> but when I do, when I do ask for a 12, and they turn around and they say, um, 12, you know, don't you mean like three, six or, or, you know, zero. And I say, no, I still vape like a man. <laughs> oh, bam, bam. But I have I noticed still, that. I have noticed how some people look at you when you ask for 12. They, they do. They do. Like, but they make you feel get, bad. You know, it's, it, but again, I think that's one of the, the perception issues. That's one of the, because people feel like I've got to lower my nicotine. I need yeah. to get, I need to get more well, because if I'm, you know, if I'm going to get off of the cigarettes, I got to get off of the nicotine too. Right. Yeah. But, but I think we know that nicotine is not necessarily the enemy. Yeah. It's the delivery system that we get the nicotine from being the traditional combustible tobacco cigarette. That is the enemy. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I would rather see you vape a 12 or 24, or now we got these 40 and 50 milligram nick, nick salts, right? Mm -hmm. But use 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 less e-liquid and get higher nicotine, right? Because I, I have a feeling what we're going to come to find out that that is the safer yeah. ratio. 
Yeah, and it it's comes all about being satisfied. We we saw in the study right. that it's not satisfying. So you need to you you request the nicotine level that satisfies you. Don't worry about anything else. You what your body wants, your body will tell you. We do have a phone call. You want to bring it in now? Or you want to wait? Oh no, bring it in now. And I love what Miranda just said that right there because mm -hmm. that is exactly how I vape. If it doesn't have throat hit, I don't vape it. I I can have the most amazing flavor. I can have the most amazing device. I can have the biggest giant cloud. Okay. But if I don't get my throat hit, I cannot use the product. I yep. cannot use the flavor. I cannot. I, that's what satisfies me, guys. And, of course, everybody's going to be different. Everybody's going to be different. For me, that is absolutely what I need. 757, you're on the air with Phil and Demi. What is your name and where you comment? Can you turn down your radio, please? Turn down your radio. Dimitri thinks he's on oh, a yeah. real radio station. Uh, turn down your whatever. Can you hear me? 757. Hey, my name is Mark. I'm calling from uh, Virginia. Hey, Mark. What's going on, hey, buddy? Mark. Can you hear us, Mark? No, I can't hear you. You can't hear us? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. So I'll make sure everything's up this time. <laughs> make sure you have the, the potentiometers turned up there. Buddy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yes, we can we hear can you. Hear you. Hey, yeah, I don't know if this is the right, really, topic to be calling in about, but we have a local vape shop here in uh, Virginia. I really don't know if I should name names because it's kind of a big chain, but they've recently started selling, like I would call, Sigalikes in oh. our vape shops and i was just wondering what y'all's opinions of that are okay i'll put you i'm gonna put you on hold and, and and we'll answer that question now so i'm not getting any feedback from you and i hope this is this is working where they can hear me on the phone um and they're not having to listen through there so just just uh, i'm gonna put you on hold and we're gonna answer the question i don't have any problem with it i don't i mean i i, I if this is something that can help one potential customer quit why not it's a it's a reduced harm product it's a vapor product it belongs into a vape shop uh i think that you should have it phil Totally agree. If it's a vapor product, why not sell it in a vapor shop? Yeah, if it's something that can yeah. help people not smoke anymore. Yeah. But now, if, we, if we're talking about tobacco that. products, and, you, and we, you know, I'm going to show you on the slide as I go along with it, that's a different story. If it's a vapor product, I really don't care what it is. If it's a small battery, big battery, as long as it's there, I do want to go through this slide. Thanks for the call, Mark. I appreciate it. And, and I think you were talking about a veil vapor. Whatever. It doesn't. It, we'll say it. I don't care. I have nothing off my back. Um, so uh, I'm going to move and fix the bill for making these slides. So it's just really, really, uh, really, really interesting. Just to kind of give you an idea of the various reduced risk products that are out there, right? We're hearing a lot about this. This is the IQOS. This is a heat not burn product, right? This is being called an electronic cigarette. A and there's a lot of confusion between this and actual vaping. A lot of the legislators are getting confused thinking that that this is the same thing as a vapor product, but it's not because it does use tobacco. Now, instead of burning the tobacco, it heats the tobacco. So just scientifically alone, it is a reduced harm product. How much reduced? We don't know yet. Even Public Health England said that heat not burn is probably reduced harm from combustible cigarettes, but it's probably more harmful than vaping, okay? So again, as me personally, as Dimitri, and not expressing the views of any of my sponsors, uh, I have no problem with this product. I just don't advocate for it. I don't believe that it belongs into a vape shop. I think it's a completely, completely different product than what the products that we use and the products that we advocate for people to, to try to use. Okay, you agree with that, Phil? Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, a couple more things about the Icos product, right? Um, first of all, I think we're going to come to find out, and we don't have that data yet, but I think we're going to come to find out that that vaping is a safer alternative than that is. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, you know, like, you know, some people always say, well, you know what? I don't care how I vape. It's all safer than smoking. And that's fine. Okay. But there are also those people who are going to want to choose their harm level. Right. And we need more data. We need more data on the ICOS. We need more data on all the different ways that we yeah. vape to, to allow you to choose your harm level. Right. But here's the, here's, here's where ICOS works. And here's where Icos doesn't work. Now, if I were to pick up a cigarette and use a cigarette today, I'm going to be kind of grossed out by it. I'm going to be grossed out by the smell. I'm going to be grossed out by the taste. Um, so, you know, the Icos is not going to work for me. Here's who the Icos will work for is the smoker, right? right. Because it's, it's the same feel. It's the same mouthpiece. It's the same paper. It's the same tobacco. It's the same taste. 
So does ICOS have, uh, not to mention that it's in all of the C stores and it has the massive distribution that the tobacco channels have. So, you know, is this going to be <laughs> really, really widely, you know, is it going to widely appeal to people? And I think, Dimitri, you can probably talk about um, what happened in Japan with the ICOS and the answer is probably yes, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it is. I think that they took advantage of the Japan market simply because the Japan market did not, does not allow liquid with nicotine. We're here in the United States. We've had this product for 10 years and we allow liquid with nicotine. I don't think it's going to have the impact as much as it did in Japan. However, they do have billions of dollars to advertise. It's going to start getting into a distribution. A lot of these big tobacco companies are buying up chains of vape shops to have an immediate uh, a point of, uh, of, of resale as we see with a veil vapor that was bought by a big tobacco company. Right. So they're going to have an immediate uh, impact on the market. I still believe that that, that, for, that people are going to determine which one they, they like better when, once they try the product. Because there is a lot of um, uh, uh, process and fiddling with this product as well, too, just like there is vaping. So it's going to boil down to what's enjoyable. If this is a product that's going to get you off of the hump and then eventually move you down you know, to a vapor product, that's great. But I do want to bring this up, again, because I am fair and balanced. Uh, IQOS filed for a PMTA here in the United States, which is basically an application through the FDA to put the products on the market, and they had to disclose an ingredient list. And Beal was kind enough to bring this up and put it in into this this nice slide. And this is just a partial list, okay? <laughs> I was this, gonna, I was going to bring this up. Go yeah, th this is just a partial list of com of compounds that are contained in regular IQOS heat not burnt. This is public uh, information. Anybody can get out there and see it and pull the PMTA from, uh, from, uh, from ICOS. And you're going to see that the partial <laughs> list of compounds, this is the marble refreshed menthol heat stick. Okay. No, excuse me. The, the list in the, the heat sticks is much longer than this one. All right. This is on the ICOS heat, not burn heat stick. And you're going to see that there's a lot of stuff in here that I can't pronounce. Well, I mean, I can't pronounce anything because I'm Greek, but there's a lot of stuff here, including tar. Now the levels tar. of course might be lower than a traditional combustible cigarette. There's no doubt, again, once about, you're not, we're not burning the leaf, right? We're heating the tobacco. But again, we are seeing that all this is included inside the application, which makes me wonder what level harm. I'm, I'm, I'm very patiently awaiting for the public health New England to do the same report as they did with vaping when it comes to this product. And that way we can quantify, we can say, smoking, 100% harm. Uh, vaping, at least 95% less harmful. Heat not burn, at least 70%. Whatever they come up with, whatever number is, whatever we can quantify that, that way the consumer can make an educated choice. Now, having a big tobacco company come out with a product that's saying, oh, this is the revolution and this is the future of smoking because this product is way, way, way less harmful than, than traditional cigarettes, I'm not buying it. I, and I'm not, buy, I'm, not, I'm not only skeptic of the big tobacco companies, I'm skeptic of the science. Show me the science that is backing up what you are saying. And, and then have an independent peer review study of that product, just like Public Health New England. Pub the, the Royal College of Physicians did an independent study. They're not, they're not related to big tobacco. They're not related to the vaping industry. So their report is completely unbiased when they say that vaping is at least 95% less harmful. So that's the number that I'm going to go by when I'm promoting this product as a, a safer product than cigarettes. I'm going to go based on that report and not on some kind of report that's included in the PMTA. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting that you brought up that chart because that is the first time that I'm seeing that ingredient list. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's, 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 and, it's, and what I was going to say before you moved down to that, what I was going to say was, well, can we trust big tobacco? Because we know big tobacco doesn't only put tobacco in their cigarettes, they put other stuff in their cigarettes, yeah. uh, other bad stuff in their cigarettes, other things in the cigarettes, maybe to make them. Uh, more addictive and, and yeah. sure enough, you know, you go down there and that's what's in, you know, the Icos product, right? Mooch, well, Mooch, Mooch brings a very, very good, pro and, and hi, John, nice to see you. Uh, well, how big is the raw chemical list for our flavors? And you're absolutely right. A cast number for a flavoring might include 200 flavors to make a strawberry. It might have 200 compounds to make the strawberry. I totally agree. But the process is not heating it, it's vaporizing it, okay? So again, yes, we need more testing on flavoring. I mean, Flavor Art has done clear stream study. There's other flavoring companies that have done specific flavoring studies for inhalation. I, they, they talked about it today in the conference. I'm going to talk about it on Smoke Free Radio. However, once again, it's the process of how these, these chemicals are being uh, inhaled, okay? And in our case, we're not heating a leaf. We are vaporizing a, a, a chemical compound that's in, inside the e-liquid. 
Never saying that vaping is safe. Never. Never said that. Never will ever say that. Okay. And and, and we're running out of time. I got I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving. So uh, let me let me go back to the slide. We get into this sometimes, and and time flies. Um, and and hey folks, uh, hey, hey folks, Pete Sardo. But remember, uh, the phone lines are open. So if you'd like to call in and and make some comments here or ask a question, yes. and if you can't and if you can't hear us, just ask the question and and just go back to your because to, I don't know if, if uh, they should be hearing me, but just in case, it could have been just just his phone call as well too. All right, so then we have the first generation e-cigarette. This is something that you're going to see a lot in gas stations, right, Phil? Uh, this yep. is you know like the, the the blue, or you're going to see you know the the Mark Ten and other stuff that you see in the gas stations. This is what we call a first generation electronic cigarette, okay? And these still exist on the market. And there's people that actually still use these because of the simplicity of them, mm -hmm. simply. Now, granted, they are associated a lot with dual use simply because they're not satisfying enough. I mean, we have this very, very small battery that does not deliver a lot of power that uses usually a pre-filled cartomizer. You just screw on and you vape it. So it's very, very simple, right? It makes that process simple, but it's lacking, I think, the one thing which is that it's not satisfying. It's what we saw in the study earlier that people complain. And then we fall, you know, the pros and the cons. Uh, you know, we'll make <clears> these <throat> slides available on tasteyourjuice.com as well, too. You know, some of the pros and the cons of the first generation. But you're going to see here a very small battery, very small battery capacity. Uh, it does not provide satisfaction for the smoker, limited to the flavors that you're going to get into the cartomizer, so you really can't taste a lot of flavors. Uh, minimal scent. However, they, could not, they should not be used in sensitive scent-free restricted areas. Retail stores that are carrying this uh, don't have experience, you know, with EVP, so they're usually in gas stations and C stores. And I'm going pretty fast here. I understand. Also, nicotine levels are set, so you can't, you know, modify. And I want to get a three or a seven or a nine. You're going to get whatever the cartomizer comes, and it usually is just in a couple of levels, like a medium and a high. So moving along, we're coming to what we call EVPs, e-liquid vapor products. And the reason, why, the reason why we're using that distinguisher is because we are not an e-cigarette anymore since iQuest wants to come in and take that term. So we're hey, starting... Dimitri, I'm sorry. Let me ask a, a quick question sure. here. Where did these charts come from? Uh, what charts? The, the, you were just showing. Bill Tarling made these. Oh, he made all of this? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and this is actually for Canada for for a different reason with S five coming over there. It's a whole different story. Okay, that's a smoke free radio episode. It's not for here. But Bill Bill actually made these and 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 they're, they're done very very well. And we and they're yep. they're evolving as well too. So we're add. We'll consult. We'll take some stuff out and move some stuff stuff in. But this is just to show you that there is a variety of reduced products out there that you can try as a smoker, right? So we're not discouraging you from trying any of these reduced products, but we're giving you the accurate information that you should know. That goes along with each one. Okay, so then we move into generation two, up to generation five. These are EVPs. These are these are more advanced devices. How they have evolved in the innovation that has come over the last few years, and you know you can see a wide variety here in this picture that that, that we kind of put up. Just small, big, you know, big tanks, small tanks. Uh, this this was originated by consumer based sector, and this is true. A modified device was actually made by consumers to make those first generation devices better. This was actually a consumer driven technology that has evolved into the multi billion dollar industry that it is now. Um, again, pros and cons. The some of the pros here. Uh, some of them don't don't contain tobacco. The uh, does not contain the carcinogens, of course, in cigarettes. Uh, the liquid is heated. Some of the devices, you know, you can adjust your level. You can get more satisfaction. You get you know higher success rate if you're going to use these devices versus the first generation. Uh, battery life, of course, wider range of flavors, uh, and of course, this uh, the, most of these are designed. They're not tobacco company owned, which I think is very very important. I think it's something that. I think something that we forget a lot is that most of these products, I mean, the majority of these products in the market of the open vapor space are not tobacco owned. These are individuals that have um, that have tried to to get into the business to help people quit smoking. So, um, you know, I'm not going to get into the ingredients uh, here now. I'm just going to stop it right there just to show you that there is a wide a range of reduced harm past the NRTs and whatever your doctor prescribed that has between three and six percent. That's today's data again from Atlanta. NRTs between three and six percent success rate under a year. Past the year, that number drops even lower. So uh, we know that these products don't work. Three to six percent is completely ridiculous. So, yeah. interestingly enough, with vaping, uh, Dr. Gardner said that the the chances of quitting goes up to eighteen percent, eighteen to twenty percent, which again validates it based on the dual use chart that we saw earlier. That again, we're not there yet. It's not an acceptable number. 18% is not an acceptable number 
for the, for the product in 2018 with the technology that we have. Okay, so if you want to take a look at this product, if you're a smoker, please go right ahead. Know exactly what you're getting into and try them. Our goal for you is not to smoke. Period. You know, we're not endorsing one or the other. We promote vaping because this is what we're specialized in. Comments. And that's too. what and, and and that's what has been successful for yeah. us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gain weight vaping. So I took some of my devices out of my G pocket. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. That's a funny one. Uh, all right. So um, what else? Was there anything else that I wanted to touch on this? No, I think I covered everything that I had to do with that. I think I covered uh, uh, everything that I had to do with uh, the conference today and the study. So we are good to go there. Um, the phone lines are open, 215-383-5752. Phil, you're up in Canada, and you visited a lab today. So yes. I'm going to turn it over to you. Just kind of give us an idea. And I hope this video is okay, because I literally put all the clips that Phil sent me five minutes, well, not five, 25 minutes, because it took 20 minutes for it to render it, thanks to my supercomputer that matches Phil's computer at home. But I just kind of threw all these clips together, so I don't know what it's going to turn out to. But it's a really, really interesting video. So Phil, tell us what, we're, what your experience is and why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So um, I went up to, or I am actually in uh, in Montreal right now, uh, working with Lavop Shop on the uh, the next two flavors for the uh, the Bromance line. And I just basically took the camera out and I said, you know what? Walk us through the process. Walk us through the procedure of of making e liquid. Um, and, and we took a look at uh, you know coming up with the flavors. Phil, one second. And, one second. Phil, one second yeah. before that. There's just two questions to answer, and there's a phone call. Let's get to that, sure, and then sure. we we'll get to that. To that. So just go ahead. I finally start talking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want. I just want to make sure I address this because <laughs> we might run out of time, and okay. I I really want to answer questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, as important. Um, question from India. Uh, for Phil, what is that tiny device you're vaping on, right okay. now? Okay. Uh, it's actually something that I just got today. Uh, it's called the Just Fog, the Just Fog Mini Fit. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. There it is, the Just Fog Mini Fit. It is a uh, a little pod system uh, that I just got from the uh, the guys at Lavop Shop. They were using this today, and I was like, "Hey, let me see that thing, and let me fill that thing." And I tell you what, Dimitri, you need to put this on Podmart yes. because this thing is amazing. Yes, I will reach this, out. I, like this is the first pod system that I've actually enjoyed using. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so that's what that is. Go ahead. All right. What's the next and question? The next question is why uh, why isn't vaping advertised on TV? It is. It is. It is. It is. You you'll catch some late night uh, commercials for the Q. You'll catch uh, you know some placements. Um, I, I think I think what you're seeing is today the guy from Q, ex attorney for Fontam Ventures, by the way, used to work for Big Tobacco, and now works for Swisher, and they have a, a vapor product called the Q out. You, which mean, you is, mean the Digiret? The Digiret. Exactly okay. right. So the guy was there talking about the products and how they market. And they pick, again, this is the responsibility and the ethics that the industry has to look at. They try to pick at um, what slot they're going to put their advertising in. There's no restrictions for you to advertise on TV. But you don't want to put it at Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, when the cartoons are there. Right? So they chose to go with the late night infomercial you know, one o'clock in the morning for, for 30 minutes, usually when a lot of smokers and, you know, again, based on the demographic of, low, of lower income smokes more, you'll catch somebody at one o'clock watching TV. They chose to advertise there. And then you're going to see some other spots on TV as well, too, for, for electronic. I mean, Blue was advertising on TV as well, too. It is a little bit cost prohibitive for some of the smaller companies, guys. Don't, don't remember that. So, I mean, uh, we can't put bromance on TV. Are you kidding me? I wish we could. Uh, but I have a... I have we, a we, I, we, we, we can't even sell bromance in the United <laughs> that's States. True, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I, I have devised an evil plan to get more uh, traffic for bromance. And I'm going to talk about it on Smoke Fury. It's really, really oh, funny. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's really, good. really funny. It's not for this show. But they can advertise on TV, Carolyn. It's just that it's very, very expensive, and some of the independent companies don't have the money to do that. We're seeing some of the big companies that are out there, like Q and and um, Blue, and I'm sure we're going to see my Blue hitting the, the airwaves here soon as well, too. Okay? Uh, let me make sure I don't have any other questions, and then we can get back to what you're saying. Okay, now, you're going to set the scene of your trip to Canada, and I miss you so much. I wish I could be there. I, I miss you, too. Didn't we have a phone call, too? Um. When? Oh. You it, said when? Oh. Yeah. We do. Oh. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And by the way, for the caller that is listening, four one six, you are in the air. If you can't hear me through your telephone, just drop the question and then go back to your podcast to where you're listening to, and we'll answer it. Go ahead. Four one six. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Oh, can great. 
Yay! See, it wasn't just me. Because so, I wouldn't be able to live it down from feel if that was me doing it. But let me tell you something. Everything's been going smooth so far. I don't want to screw anything up. But go ahead. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Dale calling from Ajax. Hey, what's up, Dale? Um, not much, man. I just wanted to have a, a bit of a discussion. Not sure. really much of a question. Sure. But, um, more on the lines of the e-liquid labeling. Sure. Um, uh I just, I obviously everybody knows VG and PG, PG ratios, sure. but I wanted to get your take on possibly adding, um, I guess, a ratio or, or something for sweetener additives. Sure. Sure. I find that, you know, when I'm selecting an e-liquid, you know, I'd like to know how much sweetener is in there. And nobody really puts that on their, their labeling. So, I well, think that at, is at such a the, great at question. Most shows, at most shows that you go to, um, the ratio of sweetener to everything else is like 99% <laughs> to one. It really is, it really is. <laughs> Dale, it's a oh, very, yeah. very great question and something that smokers should know as well too, okay? I, I, I really love that question because even for an advanced vapor, but even for a smoker, they should know. So what do I suggest? I suggest you reach out to the manufacturer and you ask them, right? Uh, unfortunately, as it stands right now with federal regulation here in the United States and in Canada, and Canada's going to change soon, I, I don't think su sweetener will be put in there. There is no guidance from the government on what you have to have on the label when it comes to ingredients. So it's very, very... It's very, very vague. You know, you got a list of ingredients. So you can put in there flavoring, PG, added sweetener, but there's not a percentage of it. And that has to do a little bit with a law here that exists in the United States on recipe and protection of uh, uh, intellectual property. Okay. So, so right, right. I, I, I do understand your concern, but I do also agree with you that if you have a concern, you should reach out to the manufacturer. Now, if the manufacturer is not willing to give you an answer, in my opinion, you just move on. You just don't buy the product or you don't vape the product. We see an influx in sweetener, yeah. but the majority of that sweetener is designed for advanced vapors. It's not for the smoker. So you're not going to see that sweetener in the tobaccos and some of the 50-50s that are out there. Usually you're going to see it on high VG liquids that are so overflavored to compensate the mixer adds sweetener to balance everything out. And that's what we're seeing a lot in the market today. And again, we're just saying it as it is. You might not like it if you're a juice maker. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what is happening. So how do we change that? We need to get more consumers involved, Dale, in my opinion. And we need to have more consumers raise that question instead of being, oh, what's the latest and the greatest candy that came out? Start selling, sending those emails. Start publicly asking those questions to hold those manufacturers accountable in order to provide us that information. And you know what? Really excellent, excellent liquids can be made without sweeteners. Uh, as a matter of fact, at NVE, um, I forgot who exactly what the name of the company is who won best overall. Um, but th the company who did win best overall, and it was a um, it was like a nilla a nilla wafer cookie, yeah. right? Had no sweetener in it. Yeah. Had no sweetener. That's surprising. It. Yeah, it was it was it was sweet. I mean, you know, it was, you know, but not that that mouth coating sweetness that you get when there's too much sweetener in a liquid, right? Yeah. Um, but, Dale, so, but, yeah. but Dale, let me ask you something. How long have you been vaping? Um, I got back into it. I've been vaping for about seven months now. So do you find difference? Like you said, you were vaping before. You, uh, you know, what, for whatever reason, you went back to smoking. Now you came back. Have you seen a difference in the liquids? And you've seen a difference in the industry as well, too, from your perspective as a consumer. And what we're seeing yeah, now. I, I, for sure, definitely with the sweetener side of things. I think just going around buying the e-liquid would have uh, found, like I, I like sweet juices myself anyways, sure. but that definitely found that the juices are a lot sweeter, the ones that I like anyways. But, yeah. you know, it just kills the coils after three days sure. of using it in a sub sure. device. It just sure. roasts them, right? Sure. So, I mean, I guess that's good for a retailer because you sell more coils. So there is, a, there is a, you know, that payoff, I guess, when we're talking about a retail space. However, it does make me concerned that that is something that a smoker can't relate because a smoker really can't taste anything. They can't. I mean, a smoker right. can't taste anything. Yep. What they need is intense tobacco flavors or intense cinnamon, some of the stuff that helped a lot of people quit back in the day, some of those pungent you know, lemon-lime flavors that were out there, raspberries and stuff like that, that helped people quit smoking. And there's no place for sweetener in there because they really can't taste it anyway. They need something to hit their mouth so yeah. they can actually get that taste in there. So, yes, for the advanced user using sweetener, even though I'm against it personally, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't, if, the, if the vaping consumer, the advanced, wants it, it should be made available. It should just be transparent. And I think it's the same thing that falls with diacetyl and acetylpropyl in all the same way. 
I don't have any problem with it being in there. I want it disclosed as well, too. If somebody asks you, be honest and no, don't be fraudulent with them and tell them, yeah, it contains the acetyl. You're going to make the choice as an adult to vape it or not. As long as yeah. you know it, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah thank for you. Sure. Th Good. Thank thanks, you. Liz. Thanks for, for everything. You guys are having a, a great show and everything. Thanks, so Appreciate man. everything you guys have, have done so far. Dale, thank you very much, man. We thank appreciate you very the much. call. Appreciate That's very, very that, kind Dale. Of And thank you to, I think it's Carolyn. Carolyn said it's, uh, you, you're absolutely right. It was Paradigm uh, Nilla Killa. That was the one that uh, won best overall, and they had no um, no sweetener in their liquid. Awesome, awesome. Yes. So let's move on, and now now we're going to get to this, finally. Okay. So set and the stage the way, for us. To, to, the, to the folks who say, smile, Phil, uh, just understand that I haven't slept in, I think, 24 hours now. So um, yeah. I'm on fumes right now. You're on cranky but, Phil mode. Uh, no, I'm really not cranky. I'm not cranky. I'm just a little out of it. But um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I took out the camera um, and, and I just started filming and we kind of walked through the process. And Dimitri just took all these uh, these clips that I that I recorded and just kind of slammed them together. But you're going to see you're going to see liquid production. You're going to see some mixing and you're going to see some, you know, uh, adding the um, uh, the nicotine, testing the nicotine, bottling uh, and and just hear from the uh, the the owners of this uh, this facility here. And, you know, I think we should break in every now and then and maybe discuss it a little bit. OK, but, well, I'm going to try to do that. I don't know how successful I'm going to be know. once I get hey, started. Ralph, Ralph, I'm working on it. I'm <laughs> like on my third cup, Ralph, and it's right. not working. OK, let's get this go thing ahead. started and see if it's going to play. First of all, and then, we go. Go, and then we'll go from there. All right, let me clear that. And this that. is going to be a disaster, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He's coming. He's coming. So what it. would you say is the is the first step in e-liquid manufacturing? It's probably coming up with the flavors, right? Well, the flavors and the product themselves. Okay. So I have to look in the front over here. No, you actually <laughs> actually talk talk to me. Okay. Don't don't even look at the camera. Well, it's yeah. it's the ingredients as first uh, right. that you're going to put in your products, and it's the way that the products are manufactured. So you, you need to have the proper facility, ventilation, uh, cleaning of the equipments. Right. Uh, the cleaning is a big part of it. Right. And you're you're an ISO compliant. Uh, yeah. Okay. And you. Just, 9001 2015. Okay, and you just got that certification, yeah, right? Yeah, a few months ago, yeah. Now, Ted was saying something. Uh, Ted, get, get a little closer here. Pretend like you like uh, Daniel. There I you love go. Him. Right. <laughs> you were talking about some other certification that you're CGMP, you want. CGMP. It's okay. basically, we're just being proactive because at the end of the day, we don't really know what the industry, what the, the regulations are going to demand, but logic dictates that we should go that way. CGMP uh, GMP basically stands for Good Manufacturing Process. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that's that's what we're um, You're working on next. It's yeah, it's 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 very easy for us to do that, being that we already have the first part, which the, the legwork is already done. Okay. So we should have that certification uh, shortly. All right. So let's get let's go take a look at the flavor right, creation. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So what do you got to do? So you have to put that on your head, uh, Phil. Okay. I, I don't have to because uh, when you can't grab it, it's okay. <laughs> so uh, you're going to look like Papa Smurf for me. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and put this on. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Okay. I've, I've done this before. We do have to cover the goatee, though. I do. I'll give you a fresh one. All right. So <laughs> this is what I'm looking like now, right there. Good. There, you hold the camera. I hold the hold camera. On, I'll flip it around. Okay. Here you go. All right, so, so I'm supposed to ask you how you feel right now. I feel wonderful. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it, you got the camera aimed the wrong. Okay, oh, that looks good on you. It does. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like on me. There we go. Is it supposed to cover my mouth and my uh, nose, too? It has to. It has to because we can pull on it. Like Okay, so like this. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. I feel like I'm going to deliver a baby. <laughs> So one of the reasons why I am here is to work on the uh, the next two flavors of uh, of bromance, yeah, right? For some testing, right? Some testing, and and I saw the lineup of flavors here that we have to try. So it's like pretty much all of these right here. Yeah, I hope you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, you're the uh, the chief flavorist here at the Levop Shop, right? How many flavors would you say you've created personally? 
Over the two years, the last two years, maybe uh, 70. 70 flavors? Maybe 70 and 80. Okay. And I know, I mean, the, the, the amount of flavors you have here is just like, you know, unbelievable. People don't realize. And, and it, it's not just one line of flavorings. You have a whole bunch of lines of, of flavorings here, right? Yeah. Uh, how many lines of flavorings would you say you have? I mean, you, you can you even guess it? Uh, if you count flavor West, TPA, TFA, Flavor Art, uh, and Awera. I don't know how many I got, but right. it's but, but I mean, it's an art putting these these flavors together and coming out with a good liquid, right? Not just art; it's fun. It's fun. I love my job. You love your job. Yeah. What's it like working for these two guys? I mean, is that is that a, is that a nightmare or is that pretty good? <laughs> right? What do you think? I love my job. Because I love those two. It's that's a bonus to have them. Okay. And he gets away with murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so like, when you come up with a flavor, what's it take? Where does it start? Where does the whole process start? Uh, depending on the customer, what he like, what his profile, what he want to achieve, and which market is targeting. That's a big question. How, wh how long? Okay, so it probably takes a long time to come up with a flavor, or you nail it like right off the bat, right? What's the quickest flavor you ever came you up with? Never know. Uh, you the never quickest. Five minutes, one Five of my minutes. best seller. Really, really. It happened. Usually, it happened once, uh, once a year. And because what's what's your nightmare flavor? What took you the longest to create? Mango. And don't say one of our flavors either. Mango. Guy. Mango. It, it's. Uh, I know. It took me. I worked six months with one mango. Tried to nail it. Couldn't, couldn't come back at it like in five minutes. We made it last time. Yeah. Five minutes back, was perfect. It's a, it's a back and forth it's, process because things tend to cancel other things out. So you have. Um, you have, uh, you're mixing ice cream, let's say you wanna make an apple pie. And again, I'm not as technical as Jeff, but I understand that you're saying, hey, it's missing a little bit of cinnamon. You add a little bit of cinnamon and you just killed the crust. Right. So you say, let me add some more crust. And now I lost the right. the apple. So, so it's, 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 it's a non-stop it's a, it's a balancing, balancing act. It's yeah. A, it's a balancing non-stop act. balancing act. And then when you lock it in, he runs to the computer and he says, okay, I got it. And he, <laughs> okay, so you run to the computer. What do you do with the computer? What do I do with the computer? I keep track of everything I can do. It's, 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 it's nuts. You don't, really, don't even want to look at it. So is the computer, is that where all the, uh, the, the recipes live and everything? Yeah. Okay. We like everything. Harris, you're on. So what is your role here at Lavop Shop? Well, uh, my role is generally uh, mass production. Okay. So we sell a lot and we need to keep, we need to keep up with our customers' demand. Okay. Uh, so. What I do is I grab some flavor, I grab the main flavoring, and um, I put all the flavors together according to Jeff's recipe. Okay. Once I do that, I add my PGVG and we have a nice base. Okay. Then it moves over to the other side and nicotine's added and we get the final product. So in this room, you're, you're just creating the flavor in the base and then it gets nicked in the next room, right? Yes. So if he's the guy who's coming up with the recipe, you're actually the baker who's following the recipe, right? Exactly. How does, how does some of that happen here? I mean... Okay, usually... Now, this is a smaller batch. Okay. okay. This is a concentrate. So right. usually the way we work is first I have to enter everything in the computer. Okay. So I have to go through traceability and ISO. And uh, once I do that, uh, once I do that, uh, some flavors are in concentrate forms, the large amounts, the big sellers, and I need to have them on hand because often I need to create a lot. Usually, the general flavor would look like this. I have a food grade bucket. Okay. Uh, and I'll be grabbing uh, the flavors part of the recipe. Okay. You pour it in and it goes by grams. Right, okay. so everything's done by weight. Everything is done by weight, and uh, I find it better like that because there's less cause, there's less room for error. At Mel, you could look, you you have your syringes, you have your beakers, you have your flasks, but it's always kind of an estimate. So you're looking at the lines and so on and so forth. I mean, if I put it down, it could be 100, it could be 101, it could be 150, this could be 50, you don't know. Right. Like this, by going by graphs, we know the exact percentage for the larger hole. Okay. So we're making the flavors here, and then we're going to the next room to nick it. Now, when you create the base, I mean, do you give it time? Because we all we, we, we know about steeping, and we know it takes time for these flavors to come together. Um, wh how do you guys do that? How do you handle the, the steeping process? Well, after I finish the mix, that's an intermediate product. Okay. So that product goes into the steep room. A ste in the steep room is an enclosed area. There's no sunlight. There's no light. It usually turns off. It sits there, and it steeps. Then after the certain amount of time that 
we set out for each flavor. It depends on if it's a fruit, tobacco, or okay. whichever. It's grabbed by the other side, uh, taken and set up for final production. All right, let's go see the next room. Okay, so this is the steeping room. So all of these flavors, that they have been mixed, but they haven't been nicked yet. Is that correct? Yeah, but okay. they already have their serial number for uh, ISO uh, traceability. So if you look on the jug, you have the, the number, and the number gives you the production date, and it gives you every component that's presently in that jug, including VG, PG, and any flavoring that's been combined to the product. Okay, so for, for I mean, for ISO, traceability is really, really important, right? Yeah, it's I mean, one of the main keys of the ISO, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so like, describe traceability. What, what does that mean? What do, you, what do you have to be able to track? Well, on, on a final bottle, you're going to have a number, which is your batch number on it. And the bottle is going to tell you, the number is going to tell you who bottled it, what date, uh, which uh, batch of uh, nicotine went in it, who mixed the nicotine. It's going to tell you who capped the bottle. It's going to tell you what VG, what PG from what batch is in that bottle specifically. And every single one of the ingredients of the flavoring that's been mixed together from which company, which batch number. It's literally an upside down pyramid. It started as a bunch of things and a bunch of people and it ended up in here. Right. And you can literally go backwards. So the, the importance of that with ISO is basically if anything goes wrong along yeah. with the process, you're able to track back to where it went wrong. Exactly. Right? Let's say a, a and flavor recall. and recall. That's and it. recall. If a and flavor recall. company would call us and say, listen, this great flavor wasn't good. There's a problem with it after test. Then we know with the traceability every bottle and every batch number that we made that that specific grape flavor went in and were able to recall. Without that, it's impossible to know where your products are and what's in it. Got it, got it. Okay, so now we're going to where they nick the, uh, the juice, is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right, Dan, what's going on over here? Well, over here, you have all the products that are steeped. Okay. So basically, uh, with the numbers we were saying, these are steeped products that are ready to be bottled. So they're ready to go at yeah, this point. Yeah, these ones are steeped and ready to go. Okay. That's why they're in that room over here. And uh, then the guys are going to explain you the way that the, the product goes to be nicked, uh, put in barrels, and then bottled by uh, our machines. Okay. All right, Eric, so what's going on over here? Okay, so right here, after uh, the intermediate product has been steeped. Okay, so we've done we've done the flavor mixing, we've got the PGVG ratios in, it's steep, now it's ready to be nicked mm -hmm. at this point, right? Or go out as zero, right? Yeah, it could okay. go out as zero. As, that's not a zero product though, because the VG PG balance hasn't been achieved yet. Okay. So right here, you would, you would essentially would grab this product, this would be the last, last number and everything. Okay. It would already be entered and I still ask you to traceability. So you would pour it into this bat into obviously the food grade bucket and then you would adjust your you would add the PG that's necessary. Okay. You would add the nicotine that's necessary according to grams, always on grams. Okay. Next, you move on to here. You set your mixer on, you'd be mixing, and while you're mixing, you'll be doing a nick test. We nick test every one of our liquids. Uh, and we keep records of them. So that bottle can go back to it like over here okay they're all dated they're all the proper nick test and everything um as you can see right now he's doing his uh so is this a nick test here yeah oh, yeah so it's uh so this is mixing the the nicotine with the the flavor and exactly. the pg and the vg and everything yeah. and he's doing the the nick test to confirm that it's the actual nick that you you you're advertising right mm -hmm. And uh, the mixer too, the mixer is a, it's a food grade mixer. Okay. So it's very important that everything is within proper specifications for 
uh, certification. Okay. Um, now we know the flavors need to be steep. What about the nicotine? Once the nicotine is added, is there anything more? Is there any more rest period, or does it, is it ready for be bottled at that point? Well, there is a steep process to that. The thing is, it's more the VG PG steeping with the flavor, and we're more worried about that because then. I mean, we'll send out the product, you'll get the right nicotine hit, and you won't feel the flavor coming in. Now, the nicotine steeping with, um, with uh, the flavor, once it's complete, it takes less time. It's not as much, yet, of course, you know, the longer it is, the more mature, the more harsher it can get, depending how it goes. But usually, we bottle it, and once it bottles, it kind of steeps on its own in the boxes. Our bottles are tinted blue, I mean, it's our trademark, right? Yeah, yeah, right. It also allows bottles. less light to, power, uh, to go through. Okay. And it also helps with steeping, uh, as well as being enclosed in boxes with no light. So okay. it steeps. Uh, the nicotine uh, steeps in that process. So people uh, talk about a shelf life of, a uh, of an e-liquid with nicotine in it. W what would you say the shelf life is? I'd say two, about 18 months. 18 months? Years, yeah. Okay. About. Okay, next process what? Bottling? You going to bottling now, yeah. Yeah, Ted? We, yeah, we can do that. All right. Uh, pauses? No, just go. No, no, let it keep it going. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to fill halfway. All right, so we'll get to this right away. So here's the machine that does the uh, the filling right here. Automatic, it's pumped out of the other, uh, and this is a small batch you're running right now, yeah, yep. right? But the machine is calibrated so that it, it puts the exact amount of liquid into the uh, the bottles it's supposed to be, right? And actually you can read that right there. Let's see, can I get yeah, that? the calibration is gonna be different for uh, every flavor. And uh, every uh, VGPG ratio, so it needs to be calibrated with every product that goes in the machine for viscosity uh, from the VGPG ratio or uh, the viscosity of different flavoring that are put together in the final product. Okay. So the capping gets done here too? Yeah, we use a, we use a torque wrench over here okay. that, uh, that is basically set to the exact torque that we need so that uh, the cap is, sits in place, but it doesn't break the temper evident on it. Okay, so, so there, there's a tamper needs, evidence seal on it, right? And it, and and this has to be set the right way. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so that quite it, the same thing as what you use to put knots on tires. Like it needs to be set at the right uh, the right torque. So it's the same mechanism, basically. Okay. All right. So he just sets the caps on all the bottles. So that's all it takes, yeah. it's real quick. And what's your name? Mark. Mark, how long have you been here at the Lovop Shop? Uh, it's been about a year. About a year? Yeah. How do you like the job? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing? Yeah, great people. Great you're, not, you're not lying, you're not lying about Daniel. No, are, you? are you sure? I'm positive. What about Ted? Great guy. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. How much did he pay you to say that? Enough. Okay, Enough. good. <laughs> <laughs> so Ted and Daniel, get get over here, Daniel. Come on. What's the uh, what's the output output capacity of, of this facility? Well, if we look at the machines alone, um, if we're running on a single nipple, it's nine hundred bottles an hour. A double nipple obviously will be double, seventeen to eighteen hundred bottles an hour. We have two of them. Well, we can two of them, and we can get ten of them. Yeah, case. hold on a second. Dimitri and I, uh, we both like the double nipple machines, just saying. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Of course we do. <laughs> um, the, the, we didn't choose them for nothing. I mean, there are those other huge machines that, 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 that can bottle, that can do everything from start to finish, those massive machines. But the thing with us specifically is that if we were making orange juice and apple juice, we'd say, okay, let's make a million apple juice bottles today and a million orange juice bottles tomorrow. We have so many SKUs. I mean, we have 100 different flavors, multiple nick levels. There's literally hundreds of SKUs. So it makes no sense for us. Okay. Because if we need to replenish uh, 200 bottles, I mean, they'll literally do it manually. The way these machines help us is we need to produce, we mass produce. We pick, at the beginning of the week, we pick, we fulfill our orders. At the end of the week, we replenish what we used. Um, it helps us because we can do smaller batches. The other thing it helps is one of those machines would basically eliminate three quarters of the staff. The way we do it, we marry each staff member with a machine and we can produce as much as anyone. I mean, we can literally, we're not even at a fraction of our capacity. 
okay. right now. But it works for us. It serves our purposes. And, and so the, the smaller machines allow you to, to, to move a little bit faster, and, and, and because of how you're doing business, it makes more sense for Again, you guys. if we had two SKUs, we'd be better off with, with one of those massive right, machines. Right, right, right. We don't have two SKUs. We have hundreds of SKUs. Right. So it would, it, we, we would spend three-quarters of our day just cleaning right. it. Adjusting and cleaning. Right, and you you not only make uh, e liquid for um, for Lavop Shop, but do you, do you co pack too? We co pack for others. Okay. Uh, one thing we've done that makes us, I believe, different from from almost everyone else is if you decide that you want to create your own line and you have your own set line set of stores, you can work with our IT people, you can work with our graphic people, you can work with our our, our flavor people. You can create what you want. Um, we'll create it for you. Not only that, we'll stock it for you. So when you call this morning and you say, you know, I need 2,000 bottles of my product X, it's sitting on my shelf. I'll send it to you. Out, I'll send it out to you this afternoon because it's literally sitting there. I'm not going to go make your product and deliver and make it and eventually deliver it to you. It's out the door today. Okay. We're very proud of that. And those those are some other services that you offer here. You offer Absolutely. graphic. You offer the, you know, the whole the whole well, nine yards, right? It's a whole key solution. So it's a turnkey solution, yeah. Everybody's, okay. everybody's here, and everybody works for you if you want to work for us. All right. Except we pay them. Okay, well, thanks for the little tour. Let's uh, head over to the conference room and uh, just do a real quick interview. All right, go so ahead, so Dave. What we got? basically here, the nets are not required, Phil. Okay, so oh, good. Them off. Yeah, good. <laughs> Appreciate so that. this is our stockpile. So over here we have all our different brands and our different uh, flavors per nick level 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, we're going to have uh, all our stocks in place, ready to go. The way we worked is we pick everything in the beginning of the week to fulfill our orders. And then after that, we're producing mass production and we replenish our racks every week. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have our products and we're going to have our clients' products as well that are ready to go, ready to ship. Okay, so this is the stock room of all the final product ready to go. Yeah. And there's a lot of it. And we have a few, a few rows of it. <laughs> All right, so I'm sitting here with Dan and Ted. And uh, first of all, who are you guys and what's your relationship to Lavop Shop? Well, uh, I'm uh, one of the owners, Ted's as well. Okay. When, how did you guys get together? Because uh, you're, you're, you're the original owner, right? Dan is the founder. Yeah. The founder. Yeah. 2012. 2012. Yeah. Wow. So you guys have been around for a long time. And how does Ted come into the picture? I came from the wireless business. I had a very large wireless business. Uh, chain of stores and uh, when I when I sold the chain um, I, you know my first love is retail and, and, and growing something small into something big and when I met Dan um, I didn't know much about the industry but he was the world's foremost authority <laughs> at least locally on the product very yeah. respected very very uh, he knew he knew his stuff uh, I saw um, I saw a nice potential synergy because the business knowledge married with the the passion and, and, and the technical knowledge would be ideal. Uh, there's not a lot of that uh, in the industry in general. So that's how I came in and then we, it blossomed into what it is now. A couple dozen stores and a huge distribution. Mm -hmm. And how have you seen, how have you seen things change over the years since you got involved? Well, I see it changing quicker. I mean, the changes I saw, let, let's say to compare it, I don't mean to keep going back to wireless, but if you compare it to wireless, which is a fast moving or was a fast moving industry, uh, changes that I saw over five and six years, I, I've seen here in, in a couple of months, literally. Uh, the latest, greatest thing today is is a door stopper tomorrow, but that's going to change as well as, as the bigger players move in. Uh, it's going to stabilize. I believe it's going to stabilize. More serious, uh, more serious entities are coming in, and uh, uh, it, it, we should see drastic changes in the industry shortly. Yeah. Since you've been involved, though, what, what's been the biggest change you've seen in e-liquid manufacturing? E-liquid manufacturing, I mean, for us, uh, we've been self-regulated from the beginning. Uh, we've done what we thought was the right thing to do. We've always taken the extra measure. I mean, we've always looked the way uh, we, we look here. I mean, we're getting better and better. But um, a lot of it's not what's changed. It's what's going to change. A lot of these people that are doing uh, these mom-and-pop things and, and people mixing 
mixing uh, liquids uh, in, 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 in their basements or in their, in their back store, that's, that's got to end because that's, that's, making, that's, make, that's dirtying everyone's uh, face and it's not fair to the people who are spending the money and doing it properly. And we can see it uh, on a daily basis with people calling for inquiries for co-packing and so on because people are just getting more responsible with the final product they want to sell, I think. Have there been any trends in e-liquid that you've seen, you know, since you've been around? I mean, obviously, salt nick is the big trend. Right oh, well, now. it's always a trend. It's always a question of uh, what's the new hype of the month or what's the new hype of the week. Uh, you're going to talk about the specific flavors that everybody's going to start doing the same thing. Uh, you're going to say, let's say, I don't know, uh, you're going to go into uh, yogurt flavors, let's say two years ago, everybody started doing yogurt flavors. Now it's, it's something else. Uh, you're going to say about uh, nicotine as well. So now it's uh, salt nicotine that's very hype all over the place. So you, you got to follow the trend. But what we're trying to do over here is not to copy what the other ones are doing, but doing our own thing, trying to follow the trend, but not copy somebody else. So we have our own products and our own... Uh, R and D, and it's also very food-like. The industry is, is very food-like, right? Because at the end of the day, it's food. Yeah. So you know, spring comes around, and don't mark my words, but you know, it's springtime. So now we like uh, fruits, and then it's 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 winter, and we like yeah. desserts, more cakes, and so on, etc. Yeah. So that kind of, you see a lot of that stuff too. You see a lot of uh, seasonal trends. The same flavors that we sell every year are gonna sell periodically during the year. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I mean, finally, this is the, the smoker show. I mean, the whole goal of this show is to is to get more smokers involved with vaping. Uh, you know, help people live a longer life. Uh, you know, a healthier life. Uh, to, to 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 get their nicotine in a safer method, right? Yeah. I mean, that that's the whole idea of this. And and you guys are very focused on smokers here. Yes, we're right. right. Talk about that. Well, if you just go to uh, any of those vape show or about the only ones bringing higher nicotine like what you told me before, uh, we're really focused into Mr. and Mrs. Everybody uh, using electronic cigarettes. So uh, we're not catering a lot to the cloud chasing industry, though we do because we have them. So we have liquids and, and devices for them. But in stores, we really focus on... Uh, on helping people doing the transition to electronic cigarettes with the variety of products and uh, that's, one of, that that's one of the first things I noticed when I came into the industry. I said, if, if my parents can't walk into the into the into a store, my, my wife can't walk into a store. I, that's not the, that's not the kind of image we want. Uh, there's nothing against the, the hobbyist people. That's great because they're the they invented this industry and we, we owe them a, a debt of gratitude. Um, it's just that it's, I don't believe it's a viable business model. I think that everyone should have access to this and this is who we should target because the smoker is the guy that really needs your product. Another thing that people don't get is it's very black and white, especially in North America. You're a smoker or you're a vapor and for the vapor, the smoker is the bad guy. Um, I believe and our, 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 our whole view here is if a guy, if, if, a, if someone is smoking 25 cigarettes a day and he cuts it down to 10, well, he's already Champion. He's a winner. He's yeah, a champion. Yeah. He just eliminated half yep. of this product. And we totally agree with that. Well, that's how we see it. And that's how it is in Europe. And it's not that way yeah. in North America. And people need to change that perception. Because one, thing, one thing I hate to see is when somebody says, oh, that guy is vaping, but he smoked a cigarette. And they all go like this. And well, so what? He used to smoke 50 well, cigarettes. Well, the guy, he was smoking two pack a day. And the only thing he's doing right now is having one in, with his coffee in the morning and one before bed at night. In my book, he's still a winner. So as the smoker show, uh, what message do you guys have for all the smokers out there who haven't tried this product yet? And I know, because uh, I'm going to say this, I know because we're in Canada and because of all the rules and the regulations here, there's a lot of stuff that you guys can't say and you, 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 you just can't talk about. Yeah. Um, but what can you say to the smokers? What can you say to the smoker who walks through the doors at La Bob Shop? Uh, I would say uh, walking into my doors, walking in anybody's door, you gotta give it a shot. You gotta, you gotta try it. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, whatever e-cig you're using, whatever product or brand name of products you're using, you gotta try it. And the the best advice I can give to anybody that wants to try an e-cig is use your e-cig when you have a roof over your head. 
So what am I meaning about that? It's pretty simple. Uh, your car has a roof. Your garage has a roof, even if it's not in your house. Your house has a roof. So when you have a roof over your head, make yourself uncomfortable and use your ESIC. If you're outside and so on, then do what you want. But the best thing to do is to use your ESIG when you have a roof over your head. And uh, that's a good advice. Try it. Okay. Yeah, I think the dual users are the biggest winners. I think that the smokers need to understand this. How I mean, I, I, this is how I got my parents on uh, into vaping. Uh, they need to understand that it's not a, it's not fine. It's not a definite. It's it's do both. It's not a crime. Do both. You know. I mean, if you can, if you can eliminate some of the, uh, if you can eliminate some uh, cigarette uh, cigarette from your life, replace it by uh, by vaping. I mean, so be it. It's not. It doesn't have to be black and white. That's all I tell people because there's mm -hmm. this stigma. You know, the vapor says, "Oh, you're smoking." Well, now you blew it. Well, he didn't blow it. He's doing just fine. Yeah. That, that, that's how I see it. Really. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. All right. Uh, oops. Uh, Phil, uh, we got you uh, frozen for some reason. I don't know if Phil's still with us. His connection seems to have dropped. Let me see if I can fix that. He's not there. I caught him in a very, very bad, awkward moment. Let me see where he's at. But anyway, we're back. Uh, again, the purpose of that video was for the smoker to understand that sometimes don't always believe what you hear about the e-liquid mixing process. And we're going to see, we're going to shoot some more uh, facilities for you to kind of see how this product is being made. And, and the truth be told that there's a lot of companies out there that are doing it right in different levels. You know, you can go all the way up to a clean room and, you know, in my opinion, this is a food grade product and should have, you know, the ISO and the GMP to a certain level. Okay. I mean, it's not like we're making pharmaceutical grade products here. Right. Um, but there is a level of responsibility and there is a level of, pro of of manufacturing that you should feel comfortable when you pick up a bottle and you're going to put it in your tank that you're going to use. And I think Phil is back now. I actually I caught you back. I actually caught you in a in a very awkward moment where you were biting your fingernails. <laughs> it's a, no. It was just froze on that. It really did. Oops, I gotta fix your um your shot I'm, here. Hold on. I'm over on your side of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop, look at that. I just moved you right over. Uh by the way, just a programming note, you got one minute to call in if you want to talk to us on the phone or the phone lines will be shut down. Um but first of all as I was saying, Phil, this was mostly for the smokers to see that don't believe everything that you hear. There is a level of responsibility that goes into making this liquid. Uh, and, and the guys over there do a great job. It's one of the reasons why we, we, we're we working with them for our line as well, too. Yeah. And we're going to sure. see more labs out there. And people do it on a different level, you know, how, how high you want to go as far as the, the clean facility. But I think, in my opinion, more and more than accessible, more and more than, than, than acceptable when it comes to... Um, you know, manufacturing liquid that's going to be used in vapor products. Right, right. And, you know, th this is something that we've seen. This is something that we've seen change from when we started vaping or when I started vaping in 2009 to where we are today. And it's it's really a shame that some of the rules and the regulations that are coming out are, are going to, if if successful, are going to drive this professional, now this professional manufacturing process is going to drive it back into the bathtubs, Right. And that's not something that we want, you know, so like even in, in the UK with like the, the, the TPD, people have to mix their own stuff now. Right. That's not a safer way of doing things. So, you know, our, our so smart, our so smart governments trying to look out for us, what they've done in reality is they've made this and, and will, will continue to make this more dangerous yes. by putting some of these regulations into place. And it, it cannot be done. Right. It cannot be done. I see a comment in the chat. We, I'd like to see a bad clean room. I'm sure they wouldn't want us to film there. But I do have this <laughs> advice. <laughs> I do have this advice for you for smokers and for vapors alike. If you're concerned where your e-liquid is being made, ask. Reach out to the manufacturer. And if they don't reply, maybe you should choose a different manufacturer. That's all I'm saying. You have the right as a consumer to question these things. Don't be intimidated by... You know, asking the right questions for the manufacturers. Where is your your liquid being made? Where does your process is at? If more and more people do it, we can raise the bar and everybody can kind of get on the same page when we're having some responsibility and ethics when we're manufacturing liquid. And by the way, uh, let's just take a few minutes and, and just praise me for finding that rig. Because the video was actually really, really good. I had no issues with it. The audio was good. Everything turned out great.
So you're not going to praise me? It was good. And that was the new camera. That was the new yeah, camera. And I think yeah. I might be frozen. Yeah, no. I can kind of hear you. You keep cutting in and out. I'm sorry, yeah, buddy. Yeah, your connection is showing really, really bad on your on your part mm -hmm. as well, too. But yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the video. Thank you very thank you very much for good. doing that. And 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 I really uh, I, I do miss you. Uh, and I'm I'm sad that I can't be with you, but you know it is it is the conference going on for two days, and I do have the responsibility of my daughter as well too this weekend. So you're just gonna have to tough it out without me. Yeah, no, it's, it's your daughter's it, it's your daughter's it's your daughter's birthday this week. Is yeah, that correct? That's correct. Ah, shit! Damn it! It is correct. It is your birth your daughter's birthday. Correct. And how old is your daughter going to be? She's going to be twelve. Okay. Do you know how old I'm going to be tomorrow? Uh, sixty-two. Oh, I think you froze again. <laughs> Poor fellow. Everybody in the chat say happy birthday to Phil Basardo. He is uh, celebrating a birthday tomorrow. And I'm so sad. I can't be there with him to celebrate. But everybody in the chat, please drop a happy birthday to Phil. Let him know uh we, how we feel special about him and um. Uh, and yeah, and I think I'm going to wrap this thing up. Unfortunately, uh, even with Phil. Oh, there he is. There he is. Your connection is really, really bad, Phil. Oh my god. Uh, I'm sorry. I know there's nothing I could do. No, no, it just got worse, worse over time. I think now it's kind of stabilizing. But uh, I was saying you're going to turn 62 tomorrow, right? Okay. All right. No, so I'm not going to turn 60. <laughs> How old are you going to turn? 49 tomorrow. Look buddy. at all the 49. people in the chat that are wishing you happy birthday, Phil. How much Aww. love is going on. So we Thank love you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We I'm here you. all by myself for my birthday. Mm, sad face. I will send you nude pics tomorrow. How about it? Would that make you feel better? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Of who? Uh, of you me and my wife? underwear, just like we're used to seeing in oh. the hotel. Not a big deal. Been there, done that. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, that, that very good coverage, Phil. You did an amazing job for last minute kind of thing. And uh, everything worked out great tonight. So I, I want to thank everybody, of course, for hanging out with us. I hope you found some of this information useful, as Phil says in his videos. And I hope you understand, once again, the concept of what we're trying to do here is tone it down. Let's do some explanations. Let's give you some facts, even if you're a vapor. But mostly if you're a smoker, don't believe everything that you hear. Don't, don't believe the sessionalism that's happening on, on vaping and electronic cigarettes. This is a life-saving product, and we're going to continue to, to promote it. And we're going to continue to try to help you convert. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. Uh, we had nearly a perfect night. It is my it is my network connection uh, from this hotel that's uh, giving us the hard time tonight. So uh, thank you guys very, very much for watching. And please, please invite smokers to uh, to, to either join us live. Invite smokers to smokers to uh, to watch the replays of the show. Uh, that would mean uh, a lot to us. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, just uh, some last minute cleaning up. I do want to thank our sponsors, of course, Inigan, Joytech, and Five Ponds. Try the new uh, sea salt line. It's not actually a salt nick line. It's just the sea salt based flavors. And uh, this is just kind of a surprise for you guys. We want to make sure that we, we start this process of giving out some kits. So we figured for the first giveaway, what we're going to do is... On the replay of this video, it just gives us a little bit more time to to make sure we go through the process. Just leave us a comment on, down on the on the replay description of this video of who would you like to help convert into uh, vaping? One smoker in your life, and why? We want to take those comments, and we'll talk about them on the next show. I'm going to give away five, five feel, five starter kits with liquid. Uh, we're just going to randomly pick out of the comment down there. We really can't control who is going to get these kits, okay? It's just one of the things. But what we do hope that is if you do get this kit and you give it to a smoker, you come back to the show, you call in, and give us some feedback. Please, we really want feedback from people that... Look at that. That's a great free shot, but you froze with your, your hand out there on the set. What we want to do is we want to get real-time feedback from the users that pick up these products. So if you're a vapor, you're going to get this kit. It's going to have liquid. It's going to be a starter kit. I don't know what kind of kit you're going to get. It's going to be an Inican product or it's going to be a Joytech product. Uh, it's going to be randomly chosen just from the comments that are going to be on the replay uh, of this video, okay? Just a little comment. I want a kit for my brother, for my sister, for my friend. Or I just want a kit. I'm going to randomly give it to a smoker on the street. Let's see how many people we can change in 2018. So five kits. You're going to get some liquid along with it. Just promise me. I know. It's the internet. 
you really can't believe any promises. But please promise me that at least you're going to come back. If you feel intimidated, call and just come back in the chat and talk about it. We want to know why it worked. But more importantly, we want to know why it didn't work. What was the issue with that so we can get better feedback and try to put out a better product out there as well, too, for smokers. So that's all we have for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next Tuesday night, Smoke Free Radio. Uh, the following week, if we're back from Germany in time, we will have a smoker show on Tuesday. If not, we might do it another day through the week. And uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the smokers that that, that just joined us in the show. And um, and we hope that you can make the transition to this product that we believe saved our lives. We'll see you again in uh, a couple of weeks.